Sitting in a room full of fucking idiots. You dumb motherfuckers! You know what you did? You don't know that they're hounding me? They're looking at everything I do, and you let this happen in public? You're giving it to him! I'm going to jail. You understand? I'm going to prison. Because of you. You dumb motherfuckers. This is what you wanted. You wanted to put me in jail. Tell me now, so I can kill you. Right here. Right here! holiday season. Every time you purchase a 12-ounce Starbucks coffee, a portion of the proceeds will be given to the Penny Foundation, the world's premier charity dedicated to helping down-on-their-luck content creators pay their daily bills. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money. I need my bills, the electric bill, the internet bill. So stop by your local Starbucks today and help send some Penny their way. It's, it's, only, uh, it's only fair that we start off with something a bit soft and smooth because things are going to get rough real fast. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. This is DSP News, the unreliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the newsroom and welcome to the Galtopia News Network, your unreliable source for DSP News. This is the Snort Report, brought to us by Snort Bucks Coffee Company, the best beverage company. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here for, as I'm sure you've already noticed if you clicked on the video, for a very, very long broadcast. Uh, <laughs> I have four videos plus one hot take that's going to make up this broadcast. It's 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 going to be a wild ride, ladies and gentlemen. Three of those videos are brought to us are brought to you by uh, Snorperdell, of course, and one is also brought to us by a uh, by a content creator who hasn't been featured on the channel yet, but I I am a very very big fan of Argent and. Uh, I have that hot take that's from, uh, let's actually wait. Let's let's just go ahead and wait on that. <laughs> let's just go ahead and wait. But let's go ahead, let's go ahead and run by the videos that uh, that are going to be presented to you that's going to make up our broadcast. Our first video brought to us by Snorpernell, DSP. What I say sometimes is the truth. Can't allow them to have 100% control of my content and no overreactions. That's from January 13th of 2020, our current year of gout. Second one, also by Snorpernell, DSP. Uh, what does this positive vibe meme? Thick skin isn't so thick. <laughs> isn't so thick, sorry. And I'm not getting a divorce. This is uh, brought to, this was pu published January 14th of 2020. And the third video, also by Snorpernell, DSP. Uh, I can't disprove that I wasted 40K on a mobile game. I already left the mobile games. That is from January 15th of 2020. Then we have uh, we have our featured guest on the channel, Argent, who posted a video called DSP Tries It Spending 40K Plus on a WWE mobile game. That was posted January 14th of 2020. And then that hot take will be the last surprise to kind of cap all this off. As you guys know, there is going to be a, a cooking segment. There might actually be two, possibly three, because of how long the broadcast is going to be. And hopefully you guys have a good time. I have a bit of a cold. We'll work through it. Because of the situation, and we're starting to get into what a lot of you guys are waiting for, there will be 50% off all drinks and beverages of your choice. So uh, please partake in that. And don't forget to have your Snork Bucks uh uh, rewards card so we can go ahead and give you an additional punch on top of the 50% off because who doesn't want an extra an extra punch to get you to that next free snort bucks beverage uh, let's see here oh also there's a couple of people who had uh, some 
I don't want to call it a kerfuffle, but you, <laughs> there were some issues with some of your orders. Uh, you have my apologies and the apologies of everybody here at GTG Network and Productions. We will work to go ahead and get that squared away because yet again, we are trying to bring you guys a consistent and a, a, a great product, an excellent product and whatnot. And we're going to have some we're going to have some issues at times, but we are here. We are listening and we do want to uh, rectify and be and get better and improve as we can. So uh, keep your receipts. <laughs> be helpful. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get all this squared away. And I'll see you guys literally in just a second. Uh, anything else? Any special PDAs? Uh, nah, I guess that's it. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go ahead and get into... Uh, get into the broadcast because that's going to be extremely long. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Snort Report and this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. Oh yes, a GTG Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. I don't smell no bacon cooking yet and I don't smell my Snort Bucks coffee being brewed, which is going to be tea today because I got a cold, so you know, I need it. <laughs> but either which way, it's time. It's time to watch me work. Ugh. See, that wasn't too bad. Not a sniffle in sight. This is how to play the game! Absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right, that's sounds good to me. Oh boy! All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the first video that's going to make up our broadcast. Brought to us by Snorpernell DSP. What I say sometimes, sorry. Gotcha. What I say, uh, what I say sometimes is the truth, and can't allow them 100% control of my content. Plus. No over, no over, no overreacting. Gosh, this cough drops killing me. <laughs> this is from January thirteenth of twenty twenty. Please forgive that that first thirty seconds or so. Here we go. The other thing is, I'm not feeling too good today with my stomach. I don't know what's going on with me in my stomach today. The Wendy's salad. I got a salad from Wendy's that when I ate it, I legitimately got sick to my stomach for about a day and couldn't stop shitting and puking. It was, it, it tasted all right, but I got sick as shit after eating the Wendy salad. I will never get another fast food salad like that ever again. I woke up. And now, when, which time was it? Because for any of you guys who followed, you know, DSP tries it, he's actually had two salads that I can at least confirm from Wendy's. I can even explain the situations to you. The first time was back at the Connecticut condo and uh, the Connecticut condo. <laughs> Well, he's going to lose it soon, so I guess I can speak of it in such a way. Anyway, uh, there was the first salad that he had back in Connecticut, and uh, the main reason why it stands out is because they gave him like a free side of Wendy's chili. He tried it, didn't like it. Sorry about that, Wings, but he didn't like the chili. And um, he said that the little uh, tortilla chips that came with it are way too salty, and he, wants to, he didn't want to eat it because he didn't need all that salt, which is just bullshit. Yada, yada, yada. He made a bunch of complaints, but he still ate the thing. And then there is a, <laughs> there's the DSP tries it that's a bit more familiar, which uh, back in, uh, in Washington State, Panda was still in the picture, and it was like, he got like a barbecue Southwest salad or something along those lines, and there was, there was already barbecue sauce on the salad. Then they gave him another packet of barbecue sauce, I think. And then they gave him like a barbecue, like a Southwest or a barbecue like dressing. And he was sitting here bitching and complaining about it. He's like, well, what am I supposed to do with all this? Like there's already, already barbecue sauce on the salad. And now they want me to go ahead and put this dressing on there too that has barbecue sauce. That's just, that's just too much barbecue sauce. He was literally complaining just to complain. It was really sad. It was really pathetic. Funny to an extent, but it was just really sad, really pathetic. 
So, like I said, which two scenarios was it that made him feel so bad? Because if it was the first one in Connecticut, then why did you order it again later? Because you thought it was going to get better? But having hasn't he skipped games? Because, oh, I tried it the first time, I didn't like the game, so I don't see the reason to play a sequel. Or, hasn't he said that about other food places? Oh, I had it once and I didn't like it, so I'm never going to try it again. There's no re reason to do that. Right? So, just throwing that out there. And I, I've talked about this before, but you ever wake up feeling green? You know what that means? Like, you feel you wake up and your stomach is feeling, like, really queasy. And you feel like at any moment, if you move the wrong way, uh, things aren't going to go so well. You know what I mean? That's kind of hot. Sounds to me like you might be hungover. <laughs> you say you woke up green? Isn't a Tangeray bottle green? It's it's semantics, I'm sure. There's no there's no correlation with any of that at all. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I felt like I woke up this morning. I was like, I don't know what's going on because it's not like I had a bad late night snack or anything. It's not like I ate a hot pocket or disgusting leftover Pizza Hut pizza or anything like that. Um, so I don't know what happened. I felt really sick to my stomach, and I immediately took some tums. And then I went downstairs, and I actually felt like I, I would like a coffee today, but I forewent the coffee. I said, I'm not having a coffee because my stomach feels so bad. Who knows how coffee's going to affect it, right? So I'm just drinking water right now. Basically, so why didn't you make tea? You have tea in there. I could recommend you a great brew from uh, Snorbucks Coffee, our Snorbucks Coffee collection. I'm not going to do that, but <laughs> you could have done that if you didn't, if you wanted something hot, basically. Whatever. Common sense, I suppose. Here's a whiny baby. Um, and trying to feel a little better. Uh, I, in reality, I'll be, I'll be honest, like the past 15 minutes, I think I've actually felt better a little bit. But I am kind of feeling a little bit queasy, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, this is, uh, not that big of a deal, and I'll be okay today, you know, um, not that I've never felt like this before, I mean, it happens, it just, it just, for me it was random, because it was like, I didn't feel like this last night when I went to sleep, and in fact, I woke up in the middle of the night, because of Jasper, and I didn't feel like this either, and I was, then all of a sudden I wake up and my stomach feels like this, and I'm like, ugh, it's kind of shitty, um, but it is what it is. Hopefully I'll be alright. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. But just to forewarn you guys, in case something happens, I have to run to the bathroom or something, you know? I think we should be alright. I know, some people are like, what's going on? Is there something going on, you know, behind the scenes that we don't know about and it's making you stressed out? Actually, no. Like, there's nothing going on right now. Oh, yeah. Remember, uh, remember when he told us initially? When he was introducing to us this whole financial situation, right? With it, Which initially started with the back taxes. And he said that, you know, I had this this feeling in my in my in my in my stomach, you know what I'm saying? This this turning horrible feeling. And I only felt it twice in my whole life. And the first time was when Machinima told me they were gonna have to cut my pay. And then when I found out about this situation. That's 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 very insightful of some of the people over there being like, Hey, the last time you said you felt sick, it had to do with money. <laughs> it's amazing how that happens, right? And Excuse me, as he said, when he went to bed, he felt fine. Then when he got woken up in the middle of the night by Jasper, shouts out to Jasper, uh, he felt fine. And then all of a sudden, he wakes up today and he feels sick to his stomach. Yikes. And let's not, let's not overstate the obvious, ladies and gentlemen. The, for, the foreclosing is, is definitely happening. I mean, we had called this for a very, very long time. Agent Proper, as you guys know, actually broke the story. So shouts out to Agent Proper. But, like, we all predicted this for the last couple of years, that this is what's going to happen. No one wished it upon him. It's just, it's the natural order, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's it. It's the natural order of things. For those who are not willing to, for those who are not willing to work hard or think ahead for the very things that they want or they already have, they're destined to lose it. Period. It's not like that either i don't know it's just a random thing kind of happened out of nowhere so i had to lie about things because i had to protect my family right uh last night was a very supportive stream we had multiple hype trains i know that sounds silly but we did we had multiple hype trains during the course of the playthrough and if you take a look the subs have jumped dramatically guys we are at 678 subs which is incredibly close to the goal remember we were way down around 620 and we jumped a ton of subs in the past few days so the reason I'm bringing this up is because we have a good chance of hitting the sub goal this week. We really do. Um, and I'm excited for that. Obviously, I want to hit the sub goal. For those who don't know, the sub goal this month is the return of the retrospective event.
I hope we can hit the goal. So, just shot, just throwing that out there. If you have not yet subbed yet, uh, we're very, very close to hitting the subs goal, all right? And I would say the hype train events that, have, you know, that just start, launched a few days ago, they've been pretty positive so far. You guys have actually been very supportive with the hype trains. Um, it seems like when we get one going, you know, people really do try to actively contribute to keep them going. I'm very appreciative of that. You know, that's going to help out the channel overall uh, in the long run. So thank you very much for that, anyone who's been participating in those. Uh, I'm certainly not expecting that to continue. I mean, it's pretty crazy that people have been so supportive with those hype train events. Uh, and I'm not expecting that that's going to be something that's going to keep going endlessly. You know what I mean? Help! Are you the man? Por favor, it's muy importante. Make money. Follow that formula that makes money. It's, it's fun to make money doing it. Now, being very honest with all of you, uh, you might say, you just said a million ways to contribute. What the heck's the best way to contribute? Because you, you, you mentioned so many options, right? The best way to contribute, guys, is by tipping me. Why? Because tips I get immediately. Because tips I can use immediately for important stuff. For example, tomorrow I'm, is my day off. You want to know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow? Grocery shopping, errands, you know, running around doing stuff that uh, isn't particularly super fun, but is necessary. And when I do that stuff, you know, I need to spend money. <laughs> so when you do contribute via tipping, those funds help me directly with that stuff, okay? Um, so, yeah, today, if you want to help me out the most, all right, the best way you can contribute would be by tipping me. Endlessly spend money. It's addictive. I love it. I love it. I do a full unboxing of the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox. Would I like to do that? Absolutely. A hundred percent, million percent, yes. If you remember, when I did the live unboxings of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One and hooked those consoles up and I explored the dashboards for the first time, I messed with all the gadgets that came with them for the first time. And Wait, I he doesn't do reviews anymore, really. So why are we even doing live unboxings? Like, why are we still trying to pander to this child, to this children's audience about things? Like... It's not needed. Like, like let's let's literally let's literally think about this for a minute. He doesn't feel the need to review anything anymore, right? Because at the end of his playthroughs, right, like at the end of a game, uh, at the end of a playthrough, he tells you his honest opinion about how he feels about it, despite all the shit talking he does throughout the playthrough. What's the point of an unboxing? Like, really, what's the point of an unboxing? What's the what, what is the the real benefit from that? He's not going to get crazy views on that shit. Well, hmm, it's not going to be crazy. It's not going to be like 100,000, you know, views like most people would. Because he's Dark Side Phil, obviously. But, yeah, I guess he might pull like 10,000 off of it. Eh, okay, maybe. I mean, for, for Phil, you know, getting 10,000 views, he'll run around and tell everybody he made almost 100,000. So, I guess it is what it is. Play the first first slew of games, that was actually not only one of the most fun things I ever did, but one of the most viewed things I ever did. People loved it. The, you know, oh, people... he's not going to show us the setup, though, because he uh, he was quick not to do that for the for the uh, the Sega Genesis Mini. If you guys remember, right before he actually received it, they were like, hey, did you make sure you cleaned off your, your uh, entertainment center so you have a place for it? And he's like, yeah, 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 I already dusted it and everything like that. Then when he did the unboxing, he wouldn't even move the camera, it, and it went right on the floor. <laughs> he he didn't even try to fake it like he actually did anything with that, with that dusty uh, with his entertainment center. It's all it's still shit. It's still dusty. It's still garbage, and whatnot. Which means Catherine is cleaning the whole house, but that. So either a it's because she don't want to go in there, or b Phil don't want her to go in there. Which means who knows what he's hiding. Just something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. For the woman who loves to keep a, a clean and tidy house. Why can't she go into her husband's room and clean that room up? Just something to think about. Really enjoyed doing that, uh, seeing that live. Oh no, views, 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 money, money, money. Give me those clicks, give me those views, give me money, money, money. And it ended up being very popular. So I would love to do that again. Problem is, in 2020, it's not the same as it was in, what was it, 2014 or 2013? Uh, my financial situation is much worse. I couldn't even tell you if I would be able to afford these consoles later this year, okay? It all depends on how a lot of factors go this year, okay? So, what I would say is, I can't guarantee anything. What I would like to say is, I want I want to do it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to order these consoles, alright? It may be dependent on some support from you guys. Your support, your support in times like this are the Wait, reason now these consoles come out, what, the last quarter of this year, of 2020? Our current year of gout? You're telling me this idiot here can't put aside 
50 to 100 bucks a month for each one of these consoles. You're, you, actually, you're telling me that this idiot can't put 100 bucks a, a, aside a month to get these consoles. Matter of fact, he'd probably have to put more across uh, aside because I would assume Catherine's going to want the new consoles as well. So, 200 a month. Let's be generous. Because that is his loving wife and his soulmate, yeah? He can't put $200 a month aside to to save up for these new consoles. To at least, a tr to at least try to. And then he could have one of the Planet Jeff or whoever else help pay for the difference. Really? Really? Okay. So Catherine's going to be forced into using her income tax money like she did the last time to get her PS4 Pro and Phil gets a free ride as usual. All right. DSP News. I'm still here. How many times have I come to you with a special video? Alert, this happened. How many times can I yell help? before people are like enough is enough okay if you remember two years ago my playstation 4 was dying and it was a fan who stepped up and donated a ps4 pro and that's why we had such amazing ps4 playthroughs for the last year and a half because i got that replacement console that otherwise i couldn't afford okay so <clears throat> that's what it's all about we'll see what happens all right i don't know maybe if he wasn't sinking all that money into wwe and making vince mcmahon <laughs> making Vince McMahon uh, wealthy so he could sink that money into XFL. Maybe he would have been able to afford it. Thank you for that support. I should give a major shout out and say thank you very much uh, for that support. Um, and allowing me to keep doing what I do and you know during these you know trying times the past couple of years. Um, hopefully we can keep stuff going. You know I would love to say I want to have P PS5 and the new Xbox on launch day. I want to do unboxings. I want to play the first generation of games for them. And give you that coverage, but I, I can't even promise that at this point. Okay. I can't afford my lifestyle. I need to come. And actually, that's actually a very good point because even if he gets the counts, the consoles. Sorry, there's no guarantee he'll be able to get each and every new game that releases for them. Think about that. Do you know how? Do you know how many people would need to step up on his Amazon wish list to make sure he can cover every new game who, that comes out for those new counts, uh, consoles? Yikes. So even if he gets the consoles, he hasn't even, he's only won the battle. The war is still waging. Yikes. A true wage war, if you will. Back on stuff. No! 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 Give me money. Give me the money. Give me money, money. Give me your money. Alice Solomon shoot again. He says, James Chen and Max are ripping Capcom a new asshole and are saying that lag on one side does not mean the other side has it as well. Well, Atlas Telemann, I've been saying this for years. We we actually know this, okay? It was proven way back with the release of Killer Instinct, and then so subsequently, people started testing other fighting games. Because if you remember, in Killer Instinct, okay, what would happen is people would be playing a game, and you would win, but it would be weird. It would be like all of a sudden in the middle of a match, it would seem like the enemy wasn't really fighting at their full capacity anymore, like they were doing dumb things. So you would win, that would be the end of it. But then, people were recording, right? And then, all of a sudden, they would say, well, on my side, it was a completely different match. Here's what happened on my side. You know, this was happening. Um, and when people realize this, they realize what happens with a lot of these netcodes is that the games desync. And when they desync, it means one person could be having a perfectly good connection and the other person's completely lagged up and seeing something different on their screen. Um, then people started testing netcode for actual latency on each side and found not, yeah, not everyone even gets the same latency. So you could, one person could be having no issues and the other person's like playing in molasses, you know? And I say that's not for every game though, first off and foremost. So for you to try to use, like, I understand what he's doing. So don't get me wrong. I'm not being completely oblivious to the point he's trying to make. But what I am trying to say is, is that it's not like that for every game. And he's going to try to push the killer instinct argument as the, the, the end of the tell all be all, if you will, or uh, will. Yeah. <laughs> for the tell-all, be-all, if you will, for the situation when it comes to netcode, and that's just not how it works. Every netcode is different. Like, even though, for example, like, um, I'll use the example of uh, Street Fighter, of, uh, sorry, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, right? Like, I had no issues when I played with it online. You know what I mean? It, it just, it is what it was. And I don't have business class internet, and I should have business class internet, but I don't. <laughs> but I didn't have any issues with it. Then again, my regular internet beats his business class internet anyway, so it is what it is. Um, wham, wham, and I don't have to pay nearly as much for it. Wham, wham. Anyway, um, uh, I didn't have any issues with it, but Phil did. You know what I'm saying? Or he he claims that he did. You know what I mean? Maximilian 
every once you know what I'm saying? Every couple of matches, eh, it'd be straight. Another day or two, eh, it's not that great. But it's not horrible. But the way Phil tried to tell it, he tried to make it sound like everybody was going through those issues. If that was the case, then how is the the people that are beating him, how do not how do they not have the same problems as he does? And vice versa. What about all those matches that Phil did win? Or barely won anyway, but that he did win. It's funny how he don't scream lag or he don't scream connection issues when he's when he's winning. He don't scream that shit. It's always when he's losing. It's always when, oh, I pressed the button and nothing didn't happen. It's funny how when he's at a disadvantage, that's when the problems really are more pronounced. I'm not. No one's ever going to say that there is no such thing as lag or there isn't connection issues. It's just with Dark Side Phil, it's always when he has a disadvantage. All the time when I play. Almost. Let's say that. Fighting games and people don't believe me. Oh, no, you're just complaining because you suck. Like, listen, you can, you can not like me, but still use your fucking brain to understand that what I say sometimes is true. What I say sometimes. First off, it's not even a matter of whether they like you or not. It's the fact that how, how often do you say that and what are the scenarios and situations that you say it in? Those are the problems. I've already kind of demonstrated that. It is what it is. Yeah, is it possible that, every, or it, not even possible, but is it every once in a while Dark Side Phil says something and it has some merit? Sure. Sure it do. It's just the very people who usually doubt him are the very people he ain't lied to in the sentence before. <laughs> it's kind of hard to take someone seriously when they lie to you all the time. It's kind of hard to go ahead and give someone the benefit of the doubt or give their voice, uh, their voice or their opinion any merit when they when all they know how to do is lie and when they lie to you for every little thing every little second of the day that's why people don't listen to you idiot and the reason why people don't lie to you is, or don't like you is cuz you always lying to them about something you can't be straight with anybody <laughs> um, anyway you can't be you can't be straight with anybody you're always sitting there coming off off the cuff about something stupid that don't mean anything to anybody it didn't give anybody any advantages it didn't give you an advantage. If you're going to lie, you should at least understand why you lie. It don't matter if we don't get it, but you should at least get it. But he can't even keep his lies straight. So, yeah, that's why no one takes your words seriously. That's really what it comes down to. This is true. That's 100% a lie. And is 100% wrong. Okay? When I talk about netcode and fighting games, truth of the matter is, it's, it is not an equivalent on both sides. Sometimes you'll have someone who does not have any issues, and sometimes you'll have someone who has tons of issues in the same match. Alright? And it's, it's not. It's, it's kind of the same thing when you watch a first-person shooter. Right? How is it that on my side in a first-person shooter, I'm running up this guy right in front of me. I shoot him seven times, and it shows on my screen hit detection. I die instantly. And then when you watch... Nah. Uh, now, now I'm definitely going to call you out on that one. If any of you guys have seen, he's talking about Modern Warfare, by the way. I mean, he could be talking about um, uh, PUBG as well, but I'm, I'm thinking he's talking about Modern Warfare. And you could very well make the argument for Blackout, hence the reason why he really don't want to run back to it because he's an idiot. But um, in Modern Warfare, when he says that he has someone dead the rights, more often than not, then he doesn't. He's shooting off. He, for whatever reason... He's always shooting off to his far left, upper far left, for whatever reason. At first, and it would be fair to say this, it's the recoil of the weapons that he's using. But in actuality, he just he's not aiming properly. And he don't want to hit fire because he says that's ineffective. And don't be wrong, if you're rushing in on someone, it's best to probably hit fire before you actually go into ATS or ADS. But let's, you know, take that for what you will. Um but uh, in actuality, his, his shot is off. His shot is off. And he probably needs to adjust his sensitivity too. But his shot is just off. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. You can have bad aim and still kill people. but Or dispatch people, if you will. But over under is he's usually just his aim is off. That's it. He's usually shooting at nothing. And that's been proven on an LSB stream. Shouts out to him and Rocky. Or on a Tevin stream. You know what I'm saying? You can see that shit. It's very blatant. The kill cam on their side, it shows they shot me first. Even though on my screen, you never even saw it. 
because the, that's unequal netcode. I mean, the netcode is... And, and on some of those engage, engagements, when that happens, when he could go ahead and watch the kill cam, he's quick to go ahead and cancel the kill cam out, and then he tells you what actually happened. You know what I'm saying? If he really wanted to prove his point, he'd show the kill cam. But he don't because he knows that he just got caught slipping or he knows that he was shooting at nothing. Pure and simple. End of story. Not in a situation where both sides are seeing and doing the same thing. So we know this. But sadly, people just want to... Because I'm Dark Side Phil and I became kind of the laughing stock of the internet because people made fun of me in videos. You don't believe anything Phil says, right? Dark side, Phil the lol cow. I've only been saying for years that this is the case. That it's stupidity to believe that people on both sides of an online match are seeing the same thing and experiencing the same thing. It's ludicrous. It's completely false. But people believe that because of misconceptions and because of horse shit and because they don't want to believe me because they want to think that I'm just an idiot and I don't know anything when in reality it's completely the opposite. But see, here's the thing. Problem one, or the first problem in this whole scenario, it's you. You're the issue. You're the problem. And you never did anything to try to rectify it. You never tried to do anything to correct it. You thought time, I guess he thought, time would heal all wounds and let it happen. But the problem is, is if you do stupid shit and or say stupid shit every fucking day, then no one's going to let go of anything. They don't have a reason to. Because they know what you're going to do tomorrow or the day after that or the day after that. So it's not like Phil said one thing that was stupid and everybody held that against him. There's a library upon that shit. If, if, if Phil Burnell doing stupid shit was like collecting gold records, he'd literally have, he could literally fill a mansion with all that shit. Wall to wall. He could probably fill a couple of them. That's just what he does. After a while, no one gives you credit because you're known for saying stupid shit. And no one has to sift through all of that to find out, you know, if it's really true or not. No one has to give you that benefit of the doubt. Should they? Eh, that's up to you. Under reasonable circumstances, depending on what the subject matter is, yeah, I guess. It's, but it's video games, though. And he's a quitter. So who gives a fuck what his opinion is? He's a quitter. He's a quitter. This idiot ran around and said I was the fourth place finisher. I I took fourth at Evo 2005, and for that reason, I'm the number one ranked American player for that year. <laughs> what? Like, no one, there is no ranking for who was the top North American player, though. That was just something that you came up with to show that you couldn't handle the three guys that beat your ass. in a port... That wasn't worth a goddamn anyway. So there is no placement for that. You took fourth. You lost. You failed. End of story. Deal with it. Live with it. That's what the reality is. But Phil didn't, but Phil couldn't do that. So he had to finagle it into this situation where, oh, I'm the number one ranked North American player for that year. And he's been a laughing stock ever since. And as long as he wants to keep, air quotes, clout chasing, if that's what you want to call this, then he's going to keep getting laughed at. And if you're going to keep getting laughed at, you don't have to give the court gesture, court jester, any type of credibility on anything that he or she says. They're merely there to be laughed at. Even if he had a good point, who cares? There are other people who have that same point too. It don't matter. If you wanted credibility, you'd be able to take criticism. You can't do that. Nighty night. Zip them up. DSP News. So it is what it is. Freddie B says it's called cognitive bias or liking, disliking bias. People tend to readily believe people they like and then they'll just actively, you know, just not believe people they don't like. I hear you. That's what I think it is. You're right. And that is a really good clip. I agree. That was a pretty good but clip. But he does the same thing too. If you're someone who goes into his chat and you don't have a, a tip badge or sub badge or whatever, he'll almost discount everything you say, especially if you're not someone who's familiar to him. If you're someone with all of those things, though, <coughs> he'll give what you say a little bit more merit, despite the fact that both individuals said the exact same thing. So he's just he's he's at fault of doing that, just like everybody else.
quote unquote. Let's, I'm not. I'm not letting them get away with any of that. Not on my shift. <laughs> but now you have new material to make garbage videos and speculative crap with for until the cows come home and who gives a shit, right? Because I can't change it anyway. So anyway, Atlas, again, I'm not surprised. James Chen and Max are very honest guys. They're very outspoken guys. They're very reputable guys. In fact, I would say in the Street Fighter community, I would Yeah, say all the things that you're not. You're right. They're very reputable guys. They're very honest guys. They're very nice guys. And you can't be said for any of those things at all. And don't get me wrong, even the devil even the devil tells the truth every once in a while, but, you know what I'm saying? That doesn't mean anybody has to listen. Yikes. That they're two of the guys I would always believe and I would trust versus people who just talk shit and hype games up to make money. They're not like that. Um, and so the fact that they're speaking up makes me feel good, that there are people speaking up. I'm not part of that community anymore. I never I haven't been for years. So I, I have no say in any of it, but it's good to hear that people are finally speaking up and maybe the, the fucking Street Fighter V hype chain will finally derail. XCOM See, here's the thing. He's still waiting for... He's hoping for the next Street Fighter game to come out. The problem is, is it's not coming out anytime soon. He's going to be, st and if he doesn't want to play Street Fighter V, in actuality, he don't have to. He can go ahead and play Super Turbo all he want. If that's what he, if that's what his matter of fact is. But then the more time that goes by, ladies and gentlemen, the more uh, experience in the modern era, or marinara, as I like to call it, he's going to miss out on. He's going to, he, all he's doing is pushing himself back, or holding himself back, I should say. Further and further and further, just like just like how he is as a content creator, just like how he is as a uh, Twitch streamer. If any of those things mean anything, he just keeps holding himself back. And this is supposed to be him trying to make a living. And I say trying because he is failing at it miserably. And one wouldn't be at fault for laughing at it. I'm not going to laugh at him yet. <laughs> We're still early on in the broadcast. Hi, dollars if people want you to do a live e3 why don't you give the fans what they want people have asked you for years to do it why don't you say stuff no one would be interested that's your opinion and not the masses that's true and that's my opinion i'm a content creator and i have the ability to make content that i feel is valid and intelligent and worthy of your watching and i don't want to make fluff garbage content that's why i don't do it the, the reactionary worthy of them watching despite the fact that they're demanding you to do something that they feel is worthy of them watching i don't think i think you kind of missed the disconnect because obviously if people are, if you're presenting a product and people are telling you in droves, we don't like it, can you do this? And you choose not to do it, maybe that explains why you're failing. I don't know. I would assume that in business, ladies and gentlemen, in marketing, there's something called supply and demand. I, I would think, maybe, I don't know. Content. Content is the worst kind of content. It's like, I have nothing to say or do myself. I can't do anything creative or positive for myself. So instead, I take what other people say and do, and then I comment on it. That's not creative content. That's the easiest way out. That's like me, right? That's like me. So, the, the moment that I 100% put control of my content into the hands of the viewers is the moment that basically my business goes off the rails. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're an idiot. You're there. This is one thing that they're asking you to do. You're not giving them the keys to the fucking kingdom. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not how that works. It's not like you're passing over the, the, the controls or the key to central Galtopia by doing this one little event. It's not that serious. It's funny how Tevin can do it. Um, uh, Mr. Medicare can do it. Everybody, well, not everybody, but the majority of people have jumped on and at least tried to do an, an E3 live broadcasting or whatever. It's fun. It's just kind of something that you can do in real time and whatnot. It's a perfect time to get tips or, or get contributions, if you will. It is what it is. The problem is, is he don't think well on the fly. That's what it comes down to. And he thinks of reactionary content as fluff. Or as unintelligible, if you will, because, oh, well, I can't sit down and actually absorb what I'm seeing and then articulate that to you in such a way that will come across intelligent. I don't expect anything intelligent out of you anyway. If you're supposed to be honest, then just be honest. End of story. Don't try to fluff it up to make it seem like something that it's not. Just my opinion, of course. DSP News.
Wow. Oh my god, I'm- What the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? Like, I'm not against taking in feedback and getting suggestions of new events, new kinds of things to do. But I am staunchly against the reaction style video. I've never liked, oh, I'm going to watch a trailer. The same re reaction style videos that he's done before. You can find some of them on KO Gaming. Live and go, oh, with my face and overreact like a fucking asshole. It's the lowest common denominator of content out there. It takes zero effort. It gets massive views because people are stupid. I'm sorry, it's just the truth. In my opinion, that's the truth of the matter. It's fluff content, it means nothing. It's people making free money for zero effort, and I don't like to do that. So he would rather get go get foreclosed and go bankrupt instead of trying to save his business and try to save his livelihood and try to save his marriage, <laughs> which is eventually what's gonna come down to. This is what it, this is what that is, ladies and gentlemen. Am I saying that Phil doing reaction reactionary style content is going to turn DSP gaming around? Oh hell no! It'll bring in views because tr believe it or not, there are people out there who would like to see DSP vent on a reactionary video of almost anything. I would watch that. I mean, I would watch it through someone else. I wouldn't watch it. I would give my view to somebody else, I'm not giving it to him directly. But I would do that. <laughs> But um, there are people who would watch that. And it's a it's an untapped market that he tried to dabble in for a little while. And then he got out of because the views weren't where, the, where he thought they'd be at. Now, those were many. That was many, many years ago when that was going on. If he actually tried and put some effort into it now, who knows where it could go? But he won't because KO Gaming, which is where a lot of that was at. Excuse me. Is a uh, is a is 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 a black not not blackmail, sorry, blacklisted. It's a dead channel now. I mean, it wasn't dead when he was using it, but I'm sure he'd say it's a dead channel now. Just throwing it out there, guys. Because I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be a fucking Muppet for a camera and completely overreact on purpose to draw an overreaction to try to make money. You know, I've never been like that. You guys know that. I'm a genuine dude. That's not me. I'm not Mr. Ridiculous Ham it up over. I'm a genuine dude who admitted in 2019 that he had to lie to his audience. He had to lie to his fan base. He had to lie to his cult to save his marriage or to protect his marriage, I should say, to protect his livelihood. Said he would never lie to them because he's the honest guy on YouTube, but then admitted to turning around and lying to them and stealing their money, if you think about it, because he told them that their money was going to something that it really didn't go to. That would, someone could classify that as stealing. Let's not call stealing. He misappropriated their funds. So he conned them, actually, if you think about it. Because he elicited money from them for something that he, for under false pretenses. And then he used those funds. He used that capital and he misappropriated it to something that it wasn't meant to go to. Yikes. Never, well, goddamn. Honest dude, though. A genuine dude, though. You heard it here. The action nonsense. All right. What the shit is that? Whoa! 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 What the fuck? What the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? And then immediately looks over at the chat to see what their reaction is. If that's not a clown, I don't know what is. Doesn't a clown need the people in the in the, in his audience or her audience or the kitties to kind of justify what their actions are and to continue doing so? Just something to think about. I'm at least going to put in some kind of fucking effort into the content I put out there. <laughs> that was good. Which is why I do stuff differently. If you don't like that, that's okay. There's about 40 million people who do the reaction style video because it's easy to do it, because it's fluff content, and because dumb people keep watching it. But I can't change that. All I can tell you is I'm not doing that. And the day that I kowtow... Now, did you catch that? There's 40,000 people or 40 million people, whatever you said, that do, that do reactionary content, do fluff style content, and I can't change that. What makes you think you, Dark Side Phil, could stop an industry... That's, if you think about it, that's what it is. That can stop an industry or a faction on YouTube that is successful and brings a large amount of money in. Just because you want to be different. 
What made Darkseid Phil think that he could change that? That was an interesting hot take, wasn't it? So what people are asking me to do just because they're popular, you know, then I, you won't see me doing any of my shit anymore, right? It'll be all the, the over-the-top stupid shit that you see people doing constantly that I don't like. That's what you're going to see on my stream. But, all, but the thing is, is your shit's outdated anyway. So it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, your viewership's going to continue to dwindle and you're going to continue to fall into financial straits. And then when you lose everything, you can sit there and cry wee, 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 wee about how you did things your own way. And you, you, it's a shame that people didn't appreciate it and you try to be an individual, but that don't mean shit because that don't put food on the table, does it, Phil? That's the reality. At the end of the day, you chose to make this, whatever this is your profession. You chose to depend on this to be your livelihood, which means you should be willing to do anything and everything within reason to protect it and to enable it to keep going so you can keep going. But see, you want to keep doing this immature bullshit about I want to do what I want. And then you get mad when you fail. And then you get even more mad when people laugh at you for failing. Just something to think about, champ. DSP News. And in my videos. So, sorry, I'm not going to do it. Alright? That's my opinion. You're not going to change my opinion either. Um, We are currently at 680 subs, guys. This is excellent. We are only... He does change his opinion. Don't worry. Whoever that was, wait until his back's against the wall. When he's doing it from his mother's... When he's doing it from his mother's house, he might do it then. 20 subscriptions away. When he's doing it from whatever apartment that he, he can get out there and rent in or Bellevue, or wherever in Metro Seattle, he might do it then. From hitting the sub goal for the month. That is outstanding. And I hope that you guys will consider subbing in the next week so we can hit the sub goal. That would be amazing that we can start working on the retrospective event. Toxic gas. Snort it up your nose now. Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money blatantly milking for money all right ladies and gentlemen we're going to go into our uh, next video but before we do we're going to go into one of two possibly three uh video initiatives that has been uh <laughs> that has been adopted here at gtg network and productions the videos will be brought to you guys by tasty this is our attempt this is us trying to do our best to see that Catherine can do her best at at current as you guys may or may not know Catherine has the run of the mill with a very nice kitchen. Kind of, it's a bit outdated, but whatever. She has a nice, she has a nice kitchen where she can make excellent meals, excellent meals, sorry, for her, uh, for her pig baby and for her, uh, her son Jasper. But sadly, that might all come to an end eventually. With that being said, uh, we're presenting her with meals that are going to require some time and some preparation, if you will, but doesn't mean that she can't do her best and provide her best for her family and that here at gtg network and productions is all we're trying to do it's a thankless job it's kind of like being part of the night's watchman i've always looked at being a detractor kind of like that it's like being part of the night's the uh like being like part of the night watch but you know it doesn't mean that you can't find meaning in what you do <laughs> with that being said that's what this uh this cooking initiative is and we hope to go ahead and do our part with that moving forward so Enjoy the video, and we'll see you guys literally in a few minutes. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone. Like that. In an instant. Fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I eBay. Contributions are mandatory, but I need your help. I am appealing directly to you.
is how to play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? Alright, that's... sounds good to me. See? See the smile on her face? That's, that's all the things that we need here at GTG Network and Productions. We were glad to help. Uh, really, we were glad to help. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the second video that's going to, uh, to continue the broadcast proper. Also brought to you by Snorpernell, DSP. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what does this positive vibe mean? Thick skin isn't so thick. And, uh, <clears throat> it's not the only thing I ain't thinking that house. Anyway, uh, sorry, cat. And, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not getting a divorce. <laughs> this is from January 14th of 2020, our current year of gout. Here we go. Big Papa Phil just to be five dollars. Is your shoes so far in 2020 been very positive? You seem to be ready for fun stuff. It's safe to say you're getting that groove back, getting that vibe back, like you're getting that positive vibe back. I have for most of 2017. What does this mean? What is this mean? That's awesome stuff. I can't wait. I'm having so much fun now. Really, seriously, and I cannot wait for more. This is cool because I'm getting that positive that positive vibe that I had for most of 2017. I'm getting it back now. But now, I'm getting that groove back, getting that vibe back. I'm ready for fun stuff. I hope you guys are ready too. Now, I want you to think about that. All the way back then, this idiot was in financial problems and knew it and literally did nothing about it. And then all of that money he took in was misappropriated and used for something else. Frivolous, by the way. And now look at where he's at. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the perfect example of someone who wanted to do only what he wanted to do and nothing else. And now he's crying and complaining that he's about to lose everything. Sounds like poetic justice to me. DSP News. I don't even know what this meme is because I told you guys, I don't think 2017 was a very positive time. Um, at all. So if I actually said that, I have actually no idea what I was talking about. Maybe I misspoke. Maybe I was like high or tired or something. I know what the fuck I was talking about. Smoke weed every day. Moment of Zen. Now I'm like, he did say in the last video of the broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, that sometimes he tells the truth. Sometimes. So there you go. Okay. So kind of a new meme of something that I apparently said. Thank you for the biggest tip of the night, Big Papa Phil. Oh, uh, and somebody had me tip me a dollar, so I'm going to take it easy for the night. I just want to let you know I had a dream last night where I was Jasper, and I was sucking on your toes. Gout, 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 gout. Yikes, mouth gout. That's not, that's not a, <laughs> that's not a, a good thing at all. But also, ladies and gentlemen, that goes back to something that I've been saying for a while, that he literally, well, at times, he lies within the moment. Since he's such a reactionary type of individual, he lies in the moment as it suits him and then moves on. He instills in them whatever false securities or false vibes, if you will, and then he moves on with it and doesn't give a shit about anything else. But the thing is, and this, this, uh, this is kind of proof positive in his chuckle, he watches a decent amount of detractor content because he knew the meme as he read it. He knew it. He, he, he can, he, <laughs> you can, just like how I'm chuckling now. He, uh, you can tell he went right, he, it immediately took him back to the Snorper No video he probably watched earlier yesterday, or probably late yesterday, I should say. And he knew exactly where that was going. He knew exactly what that meant. So that, that, that right there kind of exposed him on two fronts, if you think about it. We just had a troll in the chat. Celebrate Gout 100. So, har har har. Look, another one. Fall gout. How is this funny? How's the gout, Phil? Oh my god, here's oh, another one. Playing. How's the gout, the Phil? Wow. <laughs> another idiot. This is great. How's the gout?
My headache's coming back. Very badly, my headache is coming back right now. I can't imagine what would have caused the headache to come back. I... Look at how miserable he is. I want you guys to revel in this for a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I want you guys to take a deep look at Dark Side Phil. And I know it's scary. I know it's scary. Just hold on to your Snorkbox coffee and let my voice kind of walk you through this. All right? I want you to look at this man here. 37, who looks like he's like 67. Literally could, looks like he would fall over at any minute now and whatnot and possibly not be able to get up. Who is being sued for $100,000 plus dollars who is upside down on a reverse mortgage for 30,000, who that company is demanding 15 of that 30,000 ASAP yesterday, basically. It's been, it has come out that he's spent over 40,000, 40,000 pu uh, 40, plus. He is a, a, he is a bit of pus to be honest with you, but 40,000 plus on a WWE scam game, basically. That he was a big whale in, to my understanding, according to my notations. This guy was a whale. He was a big whale in the in uh in that in that group that he was part of, uselessness or whatever the fuck they were called. Um, nothing against them, you know, they used Phil like everybody else uses Phil. Apparently they were really dependent on Phil and whatnot, and him spending all that big money because that looked that made their gill look really good. That made their little clan or whatever you want to call it look really good. So we got an individual who owes more money than he'll ever be able to pay back probably, not without losing something, not without bleeding a little bit to do so, who's in a loveless marriage, who has a stepson that don't like him, who has a wife that really don't like him, who has an ex-girlfriend who's gone on to bigger and better things, uh, at least so it seems, and who, if word on the word on the block is, is true, is starting to make soap again, I think we might have to go ahead and purchase some because I want to support the small business owners out there in Seattle. So I, and I, I say that unironically, un un I will actually buy some soap to support her on that. So that's a thing. And look at him. Everybody in the FGC has passed him up. Everybody on YouTube has passed him up. The only reason why he's anything on Twitch is because there are people up there who feel sorry for him. And that's why they won't let him go ahead and fall into the am into the embers. That is Dark Side Phil. That is Phil Brunel. That is DSP. 11 to 12 years ago, he thought he was the shit. He could piss on you guys however he felt like. And none of you guys could do nothing. And now look at him. Now look at him. Broken down, cut to the white meat. Merely entertainment for other people. And not even in the way that he intended it to be. He's got nothing. Even if he walks out of this situation, the bankruptcy, the foreclosure and the bankruptcy, he still literally is going to walk away with almost nothing. His life will be changed in such a way. He'll be hit with a level of failure that the internet will harp upon for decades. He will be one of the great failures of the internet. And everybody's going to know. Everybody's going to know. Kiwi Farms, Reddit, Psychopedia Dramatica, all Low Cow Wiki, everybody, and Red, uh, obviously Twitter, Instagram, every, Facebook probably, everybody's going to spread that shit around. Discords are going to have a fucking riot with that shit. This is what he's reduced to. This is what his future is. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Dark Side Phil. I just wanted you to see the face to kind of go along with what's going on at present. I, I felt that I would, I, I felt that was, for dramatic purposes, I thought that, that was, you know, it was, it was a good idea. Maybe it wasn't. <laughs> you know. God to me a dollar says, first of all, I think it's very presumptuous this person named himself God. He said, I hate to tip you, but I have to ask, why do you ban humans? I mean, it is dog spelled backwards, so, you know, just just throwing it out there. I to insult you. I thought you have thick skin. Banning people makes you a hypocrite? Well, are you stupid? Because this is not the insult filled stream, you dumbass. People are here to have fun and be chill and have a good time with me. Not that people just constantly come in and be negative, toxic douchebags who are insulting and derailing the stream and making everyone feel like, like crap. 
The whole point is if you have a positive stream that makes you feel good, you don't want to have assholes making you feel bad. This is pretty common sense for anyone with a brain, so I'm sorry, guys. But your streams are boring, though. Positive or, I mean, I don't know if his streams have ever been positive, but they're boring. If it wasn't for trolls, I mean, you'd be stuck. Just saying. God, I'm pretty sure you're not God, because God will at least have half a brain to figure that out. So, thanks for the dollar tip, stupid. Okay. The taste on your lips, I want it all. A toxic dumpster to been under. You know that you're toxic. Ow. Oh. Taste on your lips is paradise. But I know that you're toxic. At least the beast. Toxic! Ow! Oh. Now I want you to think about this, because apparently some more notes have hit my desk. Dark Side Phil says he, he thinks he has another 10 years doing this. So let's imagine Dark Side Phil in 10 years, going off of our present template, shall we? So, probably bald, I would have to say. He'd probably have the side hair, but he's, he's going to be bald. And uh, I would assume all this is going to be white hair on his chinny chin chin. If not, it's just going to be gone. Uh, there's gonna be a whole lot more wrinkles. He's gonna be a mess. He's not gonna. He's not aging well now. He's definitely not gonna age well in ten years. Th this is gonna be ugly. I mean, he's ugly now. But he's definitely gonna be ugly in ten years. <laughs> this is gonna be sad. I mean, there'll probably be more stuffed animals in the background, though. You know, because he needs someone to talk to after Jasper either makes his escape or sadly passes away. But uh, this is gonna be ugly in ten years. If he really thinks he's gonna do this for ten more years, this is gonna be ugly. Yikes. I guess, well, whatever it takes to outlive the parents, right? You gotta get that inheritance somehow. <laughs> Bull Frog in a Mustang Cheers said, If Richard made a positive song for you, would you use it on my pre-streams? If, if someone made a positive song for me and allowed me to use it, yes, I would use it on my pre-streams. Orcs or dorks, just did a thousand bit cheer, and boom, that just hit level three of the hunt train! <laughs> Level three of the high train. Ah, ah. Not a Muppet. Doesn't uh, doesn't doesn't believe in clown mode. That's for all those other people, right? What do you call this? What is this called again? This is being an honest, <laughs> an honest content creator. All right. Ah, ah. Wow, we did it. I'm not. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm not doing crazy, over-exaggerated live reactions like a fucking... Overacting. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Muppet, like these other people do, to get attention from you. That's not me. I'm never going to do that. We're at level 3 now, guys. We're at 1% of level 3, but we are at level 3 of the hype train right now. 4 minutes, 37 seconds. If you guys want to try to hit level 4, same thing. You gotta either cheer, or sub, or get the sub, okay? Where the hell is this Pokemon, man? 38 seconds left, everyone. 38 seconds. The hype train's gonna end. King of the Clowns HD cheers. Why do you get more excited about the hype train than any game I've seen you play? Because I'm joking. You can't tell when I'm joking that I think that the hype train's kind of silly. I mean, it's awesome people are contributing. It obviously helps me tremendously, but I'm- So you don't really care about it and you're being dishonest to just, to just squeeze more money out of your fan base? Yikes, that's a, uh, that's probably a hot take you shouldn't have said. Obviously joking. So he goes, what do the detractors get if they don't do anything for two months? You mean they don't rip me off or make fun of me? Oh, they get a sense of self-respect and they Yeah, no one gives a fuck about that. Um, <laughs> it's funny because uh, one of you actually in the comment section brought up that it was interesting how he wants us to take a two month hiatus, right? He wants us to take a two month break. So, no one can go ahead and basically throw shade at him over the foreclosure nonsense. And he can basically paint the narrative and uh, kind of dig in the pignosis. So when we come back, it would be easier for him, I guess, to basically deflect everything that we would say about it or our opinions on it because he's already indoctrinated them with all of the, with everything he wants them to know and wants them to hear anyway. Because you remember... When he initially put that challenge out there, he said that would be the best two months for him ever. 
Also, I'd like to add on to that, that it's funny that that whole two month thing is right around the time this whole foreclosure thing is supposed to be executed. Because it's supposed to take a couple of months, allegedly, for him to work all this out. So us taking a two month hiatus would kind of be a good thing for him. He can put the he can put the um, uh, the mighty squeeze, if you will, on the pay pigs and get as much money out of them as possible. We come back in two months. And the foreclosure is just going to go through as planned. the pro Or the bankruptcy in the foreclosure, I should say, would go through as planned. Problem is, though, is, and this is something that I assume other people will speculate as this goes on, is that he doesn't really know the parameters of his loan. And I don't think, as I'm sure other people will too soon, he doesn't understand exactly how foreclosure works. He thinks that they're going to take the condo, Right, and in his bankruptcy, all of his debts are going to be paid clean and clear, and his credit gets screwed over, and that's it. It's going to be a whole lot worse than that, depending on what chapter he has to file under. That right there is obvious, not to him though, but to everybody else. I think Phil just wants the quick and easy get this off my back now, please get this off my back, please, please help me read. And he's not actually thinking about the consequences now. I'm sure. That James the Lesser, Agent Proper, um, LSB, and Tevin have already have already articulated all this, but he's going to be in a world of fucking hurt in no time flat. It's going to get bad. But later on in this broadcast, ladies and gentlemen, is when we're going to talk about what's going to happen to Catherine, depending on what move she makes. And I'm really hoping that Phil don't fuck her over. But as you know, with everything in life. At least in DSP's life, everybody's just collateral damage. DSP News. Prove that they're actually talented, which they they cannot prove right now because, as I said, the only reason they get views is because they make fun of me and ride my coattails. I can't. We can't do that right now. I can't do that. We can't do that right now. So that means the window of me doing it later on. Or anybody else is still open. Okay. So then everybody sit back, relax. <laughs> sit back and relax. And let's have a good time with this foreclosure, this bankruptcy, and this WWE 40K scam. And uh, we'll go for it. You know, we'll, we'll work out the details later. Salud. So unless they can prove that they can bring in viewership on content that's not nasty, negative, vile, toxic, and just totally making fun of me, they cannot say that they don't ride my coattails and that they don't owe everything to me. They would well, I don't owe you anything. <laughs> the, majority of this, the majority of this goes to my audience, and I'd say the rest of it goes to my friends. So yeah, I don't owe you anything. Anyway, um, as it pertains to uh, Phil and you know, wanting his approval or his respectability or whatever the fuck that means. None of that means anything. Did he not learn from the last video in this broadcast that when the FGC doesn't give a shit about anything you say, why should the detractors? Why should anybody on Twitter in the gaming in the gaming sphere sphere? Why should why should anybody give a shit about what you think? And you've proven this time in and time out to all these different communities ladies and gentlemen, that he's tried to frequent, that he's tried to find some respectability in, and he just wasn't able to do it. And yet he's still looking for it. And now he's become so desperate, and he really is so pathetic, that now he wants to come to the enemies. He wants to come to, to the ops, and he wants to go ahead and try to get our approval. Under the, under the pretense that we're trying, that we should be trying to vie for his approval. That's kind of sad. Sorry, Phil. I don't take the knee to nobody. <laughs> That's not. I mean, outside of the future GT, Mrs. GTG, I'm not taking the knee to nobody. So that that ain't that ain't a thing. You know what I'm saying? That's not a thing at all. You better talk to Kaepernick about that. Talk to Colin about that one. I don't. I don't take knees. We don't do that. Even though, like I said, this is kind of like the Night's Watch. But I missed that part of the ceremony, though. So, you know, yet again. <laughs> Let's continue. I should be able to say, oh, look, I was still successful even without Phil for two whole months. 
but they can't do that. I'm telling you right now, not one of them is able to do it. And none of them took me up on my challenge, which is no fucking surprise. They are ne they know they can't. If it was no if it was no surprise, then why'd you issue it? Just like how if you knew Catherine was gonna get trolled on that Christmas holiday Halloween horror video game marathon, why'd you bring her up there? It's funny how he knows how everything's gonna play out, and yet he continues to make the same mistakes. It's very strange. It's very strange. They're ter terrified. They can't put out content people actually want to see. It's hard work to actually put out content people want to see on a daily basis. That's why they rip off someone who does so. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is an idiot. I didn't realize that just existing was hard work though, Phil. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm so confused. I, I, I didn't realize that. Whatever. It was spamming the streets and yelling, ARE YOU GETTING DIVORCED?! No, I'm not getting divorced, you fucking idiot. First of all, it's impolite to ask a question like that on someone's gameplay stream. Second of all, maybe you should stop being a complete fucking buffoon and believing dumb shit and what they say. Holy fuck, you're dumb. <laughs> stop picking my nose, I'm not. My nose itches, so I keep rubbing it because my nose is itching. I'm not picking my nose, you fucking... Now, here's the thing. As it pertains to the divorce situation, this is my hot take on it. Uh, if Catherine is, and I, I pray that she's as smart as I think she is, she's going to cut and run because her, his debt is not her debt. And the large majority of his debt, if not all of it, honestly, has not a goddamn thing to do with her. So as far as I'm concerned, she doesn't have to commit to anything at all. Phil can very well take the hit on his credit by himself and it is what it is. If she takes a little bit of that hit with him, it doesn't help him. He's still going to be fucked for a decade, if not longer. So why would you screw up her credit to try to help preserve yours when your credit's in hell anyway? That makes no sense. So I'm hoping she don't sign the shit. I'm hoping she don't co-sign the shit. I'm hoping that, to be honest, if she thinks it's a little, if this is too much for her, then go home. Like, go ahead and go back to your parents for a while. Regroup. Figure out what you want to do. But do not fuck up your financial future for this idiot. Don't do that. Especially after you guys literally got married in what? Uh, April? April 10th, I think? Of 2019? The foreclosure story broke what? End of last year? Or no. Uh, yeah, the foreclosure thing pretty much broke end of last year. The bankruptcy thing is is I mean we all we were all knew that was gonna happen sooner than later. So she she walked into a clusterfuck. But that doesn't mean she has to walk out with it. Just my opinion though. Idiot. First you ask, I'm gonna get a divorce, they tell me to stop picking my nose. What am I doing? Just fuck this guy. I'm just going to ban. Why am I wasting my time with a fucking trash person whose name is actually trash? Fuck this guy. Get the fuck out of my stream. Jesus Christ. Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money. Blatantly milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone. Just gone. Like that. In an instant. Fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I eBay. Contributions are mandatory. But I need your help. I am appealing directly to you. Are you guys ready for that next, uh... For that next food take? Yeah, so am I. <laughs> I hope Catherine takes what I say to some type of uh don't take it necessarily to heart, but I hope I hope she 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 listens to it because that's this is gonna be important. Please do not go ahead and throw your financial future to the side for this ass clown. Alright guys, let's get into the food broadcast and I'll see you guys in just a minute.
is how to play the game! That is an epic fucking intro, dude. And I have to warn everyone, warning, what you may see right now is going to be absolutely disgusting. Sound good? All right, that's, sounds good to me. Wow. All right, I'm glad she approved for a second time. Because as you know, we aim the please here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here with the third video that's gonna make up our broadcast. <clears throat> well, to continue our broadcast, I should say. Ladies and gentlemen, it's brought to us by Snorper Now. DSP. I cannot disprove that I waste 40k on a mobile game. I already left mobile games. This is from January 15th of 2020, our current year of gout. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Royal tipped me $100. <laughs> Thanks for the money, stupid fuck. Um, Junior Mint 007 did a 100 bit cheer to become the top cheer of the day. The thing he's proposing is ridiculous, but I'll, I'll read it anyway, I'll entertain it. So he proposes the following ridiculous thing. He says, Mate, have you ever thought about holding a Street Fighter tournament in public with people like Evil AJ and others to see who's really the best? No lag and no bullshit, plus you could sell tickets. Good idea to have your name out there. Uh, Let's see. I'm a full-time gameplay streamer. I have to be here six days a week full-time to make ends meet and pay the bills. You want me to not stream for a day or two to hold a Street Fighter tournament out of nowhere... In a Street Fighter community that I now have no notoriety in because I have not been- Idiot, you could stream the- you could actually stream the tournament. And no one says that you have to actually- it has to be part of the FGC. You could literally just- you literally just- You could literally just rent a small area, right? Like a game shop or something, and have it done there. Like, that's easy. That's super fucking easy. I mean, you could, if you will, before you burn that bridge, you could have reached out to Ben and asked if you could have it at their studio area or whatever. Like, there's... Dude, people have had tournaments inside of, like, McDonald's, Wendy's, and places like that. You just need a little bit of ingenuity. Doesn't have shit to do with the FGC. But I like how the first thing he said was the FGC because he still desperately wants their approval, even after all these years. So that was a, that was a nice catch for some of you guys who caught that. Of said Street Fighter community for the greater part of 10 to 15 years. You want me to hold a tournament that's an open invitational to my detractors to play me in real life with no lag to basically, uh, you know, beat the crap out of them in real life. You want me to sell tickets to this event, not make it a free tournament like all Street Fighter tournaments are, but you want me to actually sell tickets like this is some kind of a pay per view event. Um, I don't even know. Like I said, you can stream the tournament. You're the one who's broke, you're the one who has all these overdraft fees. You're the one who's about to get foreclosed on. You're the one who's about to go bankrupt. Maybe selling tickets isn't a bad idea. Where to begin on how stupid of an idea that is? It's ludicrous. What you're saying is absolutely ludicrous. It would never happen. All right? They just like to laugh and they, oh, he's the lol cow or whatever, right? All right. And apologies in advance, guys. We got the latest stupidity of detractors. They, a bunch of idiots have been harassing my stream for the last day or so. We're just going to put up with it and shake our head in the usual nonsense and move on positively and just say, okay. Uh, at this point, you know, so many stupid things get said and done in regards to me that I just, it, it, at some point, it just stops having any kind of a real effect. Really? By the way, guys, FYI, if you notice a tip pop up and I don't address it at all, it could be one of two things. In general, it's usually that someone is tipping me in order to do something really disgusting and insult me on the stream. And if that's the case, I'm just going to ignore the tip and not address it at all. Okay. Now, let's talk a little bit about that thing he's trying to ignore. Uh, credit for this, by the way, goes to BT9494, or 9494, on uh, on Kiwi Farms. B I'm, I'm going to call him BT for short. BT ended up uh, finding out that there was a, uh, a name. <laughs> I think it was They Call Me D uh, DSP um, on, uh, on this WWE champion, uh, this WWE championship game or, or whatever. It's basically like one of those pay-to-win games. You know what I'm saying? You kind of throw money into it for instant dopamine. It's a satisfaction, and then you move on with your day. The problem is, with games like that, 
is those games have whales. And they have whales who sink enormous amounts of money into shit like that for what is instant gratification. Gambling, if you want to go ahead and, you know, flush it out. Well, he saw this correlation with the name, but he didn't just go off that. He, he looked at the name, and then he looked at some of the patterns, and he presented it to Kiwi Farms. And he was just like, hey, I found this. I'm not sure if what is what, but it seems interesting, and it fits DSP's, uh, it fits DSP's kind of pattern patterns, if you will. What do you guys think? People on Kiwi Farms picked it up, and Kiwi Farms could have immediately been like, oh, well, no, we're not going to deal with that or whatever. They were like, well, can you provide us some additional information? As the thread goes on, which I'll link it in the description if you guys want, so you guys can read over it. As the thread goes on, uh, he provides more, or whoever the individual is, whoever BT is, provides more and more information. People come in and are like, well, okay, can we confirm this? Can this possibly be confirmed? So on and so forth. And as, the, and as you see the thread start to kind of blossom, if you will. You start to see how people start to flush certain things out. You see how people start to find different correlations. You see how people were able to match up certain times of the day where you could time it out with him. It's it's very, 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 very compelling. And even the skeptics, if you will, of the situation didn't just shit on BT. They were like, all right, well, this is what he's presented. Let's do some research and we'll see what comes out of it, as all communities should do. And that's essentially what's brought us to where we're at now. I'm skipping a bunch of key moments, if you will, but I hope to co go over some of that later on within this same broadcast, so don't worry about it. Um, Phil's denial of it, though, is sweet. Oh, it's like the sweetest of slow-roasted pork. The reason why is it's no different than the whole situation with the bankruptcy or with the foreclosure. People called that, too. He banned him. Or he went ahead and brushed them away and shit and said that they were assholes and they knew nothing about it. Uh, they, they don't know anything about it. And uh, or he knew nothing about it, I should say. And only to come around later and say that, oh, well, I did know. You know, or I just never, I never acknowledged any of you people. I never said that didn't happen. I just didn't want to acknowledge it. I waited to my own terms. Whatever silly ass talk that was. In any case, this WWE thing is also something. And that's one of the reasons why he needed that two month hiatus. Because he, he reads Kiwi Farms. He has his little minions over there who reads Kiwi Farms. And those minions were probably like, what the fuck is this, Phil? Because you got to remember, not only is Phil reading Kiwi Farms, but he's sending other people to do it too. Which means Kiwi Farmers must have some level of credibility if he is asking people to go over there and read it too. Or to keep tabs on what's going on over there. So whoever it was who discovered that probably went to Phil and was like, hey, you got some explaining to do. What the fuck is this? And that's where his biggest problem is. Because now, now, ladies and gentlemen, that 40K, allegedly, that 40 plus K, I should say, that should have gone to helping out with that condo, paying those condo dues, paying down on his mortgage on the, uh, the house in, in Washington, helping to pay these credit card bills, helping to pay those overdrafts, helping to pay these taxes, is now going off to some basically... Uh, money pit video game by WWE and Phil is so desperate for money now that he's about to lose his condo and now he has to file for bankruptcy. All of this happened in such a very peculiar amount of time that you can see why he wants to clamp down on this WWE, uh, WWE shit as quickly as possible because it don't look good that you basically played with your own casino's money and you squandered it. It's, it's kind of fucked up. It's kind of an issue. But let's continue, though, because it, it, it opens itself up a little more. Same thing with a cheer. It might be a cheer that comes in from someone who's being a complete asshole and insulting me or whatever. I'm just going to ignore that stuff, and I'm not going to address it. So please understand that. So please understand that because sometimes, like, for example, someone just hit me $5 and insulted me in the tent. So obviously I'm not going to give them credit or call it out. I'm just going to ignore it. But now some people might speak up, Phil, you forgot a tip, you forgot a tip, you forgot a tip. Don't do that, all right, because that's just going to... Piss me off, derail the stream, and the bottom line is I know what I'm doing. I've not been a full-time streamer for three years. I think I got the handle on this at this point, okay? What? No, non- You- Viewers. Ask- When people ask you in real life what you do, what do you tell them? I'm a full-time streamer. I stream on Twitch TV full-time. That's what I do. That's my job. Adriana says, 
Well, I understand not addressing it, but why not add it to the actual tips total? Is that to being dishonest? Yes! Yes! No, and I'll tell you why. There's a few reasons why. Number one, by even adding it to the tips total, that's giving them attention. That's, oh, look, I can affect things. I can make Phil do stuff. Ha ha ha, I have to acknowledge my existence. And I'm sorry, if you're going to insult me, you don't deserve any recognition whatsoever. But no. you're giving them recognition. You're giving them recognition with just a statement that you made now on top of the little spiel that you gave them about I can choose what I acknowledge and what I don't. And so don't bring shit up to me because it's just going to derail the stream and it's going to get me pissed off. So you've kind of already done that. But let's continue. Number two, nine times out of ten, if someone tries to leave me an insult like that, they're going to try to dispute it. They're going to mm -hmm. try to like... But wait a second, Phil. I thought you always told us that in Pig Roach lore that you win every dispute no matter what, so it doesn't matter. Or is it true what Wings of Redemption has been saying in that every chargeback he's ever gotten, he loses and whatnot for the most part. And, um, you know, you just let it go and you make sure that you have the money in your PayPal account for the $20 kickback that you're eventually going to have to pay up. And didn't Phil say some sh Actually, let me wait. I'll, I'll... Let me wait. File a complaint with PayPal, and now I gotta go through this lengthy and annoying-ass fucking process. Ultimate laziness. But I thought PayPal always sides with him, and PayPal loves him and his donations. By which I gotta try to keep that money. Now... Every once in a while, if I'm like inundated with work or whatever, sometimes I won't bother with it. Almost always, always I bother. Wait, with wait, wait, wait! What? You've given up on? You've given up on disputes, ladies and gentlemen. This is the same person that, as of late, has been begging you guys, or been begging to his audience, I should say, for money for groceries. But we've given up on disputes before. This is shocking. It, and I keep that money. I need th that money. I really do. I need that money to pay my bills. The problem is the dispute process is not easy. It is an arduous pain in the fucking ass where first you have to respond by giving information on what happened, the stream, the information, like if you have any evidence of what this person said or did on your stream. Then it has to push back twice. Usually I have to do at least multiple steps of work just to keep a single tip that someone disputes like that. So for me, the bottom line is this person's probably going to do that just to annoy the fuck out of me. They don't deserve recognition. They're a scumbag. So, as Storm Brunel just said, he's basically using... He's basically using troll tips and donations as padding, if you think about it. He's using that as padding. He's using it as lining, I should say. He's using it to line his own pockets while basically ripping them off on the tip goal. His own audience. So he's literally fucking his own fan base over. Yet again. He's literally screwing them over. Because remember, he used to... The, the mythos was, oh, I win every dispute. Every single dispute, I win it. Ever since Mort. And his $112 or whatever that was. Or the 120-something, 12 disputes. Or reports that he did. Whatever. Or chargebacks. He says that he's won every single one of them. And then as time went on, oh, well, you know, I, I sometimes I win them, sometimes I don't. But for the more, majority of them, I win them. Oh, PayPal, they they know that people try to, try to, you know, false report me for shit, so they always side with me. He's flip-flopped on that story forever. Now, now, he's sitting here and using disputes as justification not to put on the tips board so he can screw the fan base into giving him more money despite the fact that he's probably sitting on mm, roughly, let's say, an additional 20 to $50 each and every stream. Yikes. That's, uh... That's, uh, that's, that's... That's rather disgusting. Not surprising, though, but that's pretty disgusting. You would literally, he would, he's willing to risk losing more pay pigs for an additional 50 to a hundred dollars a day. 50 to a hundred dollars a stream is worth losing a couple more people who believe in you. Wow.
actually cared and wanted to help, they wouldn't leave a disgusting, insulting message on my stream. they just contribute and be positive. But it's not. It's an asshole. So he can fuck off and get no credit for what he did because he doesn't fucking deserve it. And he's probably just going to give me more misery in the long run. Anyway, so fuck him. There's your answer. <laughs> Dishonesty for me is a big thing. It's like the ultimate betrayal. You know what I mean? Since 20, uh, 2008, when I started on YouTube, that's who I've been. The honest guy. Um, Hogfather, cheers. What could... Oh, here we go again. What could detractors say or do from you to prevent you from doing another house tour that they can't do with past house tour videos? Um, just getting involved in my privacy. I don't give a fuck anymore. It's no one's business what's in this house. It's no one's business, you know, what's where, anywhere. And all they're going to do is nitpick anything they see in the video to make more ridiculous, over-the-top nonsense bullshit. And the little that I do to give them content, the better. So I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm not letting them... Now, first off, Snorper now yet again is right. He's, he's scared to show us what new stuff's in the house. Because I assume... In some ways, that house looks a little bit different than it was the last time we saw it. Secondly, <laughs> and Phil, I, I don't know if you've realized this, but uh, so, so, some people have come through on some smart shit to kind of lay all of this out. Let me actually give you guys an example. Give me just a second. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and check out our, uh, our messages. Because, uh, you know, Phil don't do that. Let's see here. Big ups to Bear Templar. Okay, here we go. But this, okay, this right here is from Big King the Goat on Twitter. Shouts out to Big King. Uh, or sorry, King Bean the Goat on Twitter. My bad. Your, but your handle is King Bean uh, 104. So my man right here has said, and I'm, I'll try to kind of paraphrase it all. Because it's, it's, it's kind of, it's not long, but... Basically, he said, just a thought, uh, just thought about something that since Phil has to file for bankruptcy, we'll never know exactly how much he's earned, but he'll have to reveal um, what he's behind on. Houses, cars, credit cards, etc. So eventually, when that bankruptcy report comes out, we're all going to know everything. And Big Bean the Goat is right. So Phil can hide everything in his house all he wants, because when the liquidation happens, they're gonna cat they're gonna basically catalog everything anyway. So we're gonna know exactly what he has. So you sit here doing this frivolous bullshit about hiding uh hiding all this crap in your little house tours, and in a little while it ain't gonna mean not a goddamn thing to anybody, because we're gonna know everything anyway. That's crazy. Shouts out to King Bean the Goat on Twitter for that. So, yet again, Phil, you wasting time, bruh. You wasting time. Like, the house, the tractors are the casino now. We hold the cards. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're too busy hiding pennies here and pennies there. And we were never going for that anyway. We were going for the gusto. We were going for the jackpot. And that's what we're going to eventually get. So go ahead and hide all that stupid little shit that you buy from Ikea or this frivolous little crap that you buy on your days off to show Catherine that everything is still okay. Eventually, we're going to find out all that. But good luck to you, though. DSP News. Do I know anything about me or my life? They don't fucking deserve it, okay? So that's why. Plus, I'll be honest, I don't feel like doing a house tour. Yeah, I've been there, done that, right? My house is my private life now, and I like having a private life. That's completely immune to people knowing every little thing about it and then criticizing and attacking and all that shit, so. It's fucked up. If you would just leave me the fuck alone, I would have had a lot more success. Yeah, I, I told you guys, as fucking assholes are doing, I told you, if I don't address a, a tip, it's because people are trolling. And they're all on this new bandwagon of this new stupid detractor being bullshit, so... I'm just ignoring it, guys. Please understand that. The best part about all of it is that people are so dumb... Look at how much life he's giving it. It's funny, because if it was a lie, he'd let it go, right? But he can't. He can't because he's eating at his ass. And he know. <laughs> and he know it. And he know it. And he can't let it go. Which goes back to something that um Howard said during the John and Howard response back in the day. That he's terrible, he's terrible, sorry, he's terrible at PR. He doesn't know how to handle situations. He doesn't know how to handle people. 
uh, sowing the seeds of his own destruction. It's 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 poetically beautiful at times. Say all the stupid shit about me that they don't even like. They're so dumb they can't even get on the same page. Like they'll they'll try to insult me by saying something. Check out this spin. But then they all have different information. Like, I see the thing is, if I if I now, how does he know that we have different information if he doesn't pay attention to anything that we do? And he tells allegedly he tells people from his own audience, don't go over there because you're gonna get doxxed, you're gonna get hurt. Don't it, don't don't go over there and talk to those crazy people because you're just gonna fall into this into the the toxic toilet juice yourself. Think about that as he as he starts talking. Give you. The example is going to give them attention and tell you what they've been saying. I don't even want to fucking talk about it because it's so fucking stupid. You know, I actually don't even want to give them the time of day, but it's just so funny that, like, they don't agree on the same exact the same exact thing that they're talking about. They'll all say something different and not even realize how dumb they are that they're saying different shit. <laughs> it's just so dumb. <laughs> I'm the lol cow. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be doing another debunk stream, Rumble Stiltskin, considering the fact that it doesn't matter what I say or do, that no one listens who's going to say that shit anyway. You see what I mean? Like, the moment I address... So the debunking stream wasn't for his audience to let them know that he's not a liar and that he still has some validity to what he says. It was trying to impress the detractors, trolls, critics, and critics. Detractors, trolls, critics, and haters. Yikes. That's, uh, that's pretty disrespectful. What about the fans, Phil, who need reinsurance? Oh, well, they're not really fans because if they were real fans... And real cult members, I suppose, is what you really mean. They wouldn't need reassurance. Good point. Touche. Touche. See, it doesn't matter because then they, the goalpost gets moved. So if I right now say, oh no, I'm not involved with this new detractor meme and they're full of it and they made it up. It doesn't matter because then the next thing, they'll make up another one. You know what I mean? They'll make up the next one. They make up the next one. They're out of their minds. There's so much shit they said about me over the years. It just, I don't care anymore, you know? I just had enough. I fucking had that. And the thing is, the stuff that they do too, there's no way to defend against it. There's no defense against the stuff that they say. You know what I mean? Because it's all hypothetical. So, they don't have concrete evidence of anything ever, but they say something negative about me. Obviously, there's no concrete evidence because it's There's false. no concrete, concrete evidence ever of any of this, but because there's no concrete evidence, you can't deflect. You can't defend, not deflect. That's what you're doing now. You can't defend against it. There's plenty of evidence over here. You don't want to address it. And because of that, it automatically gets scaled down to being not credible. That it has no validity at all. It has no worth. Okay, that that's a <laughs> that's an interesting way of looking at the world. I can't disprove it. So therefore, I can't say, oh, you know, here's my proof that it's false. Well, you don't want to disprove it because you don't want to acknowledge it. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I'm always the guy, oh, see, if, if this wasn't true, then Phil would disprove it. Like, no, that's not how it works. It's actually called innocent until proven guilty. And until you can prove something, you shouldn't accuse someone of it. It's just people... But they've they've kind of already proved it because, as Snorpinel yet again is saying, you're acknowledging it as a meme. You're already giving it life. So that is the acknowledgement of it. That is the proof that it exists. If it's not true, then come out and say it's not true. What he's doing is giving them excuses as in why it's not true or why you shouldn't listen to these people. Remember, if I, if I came out, if I tried to dispel it, they would just push the goalpost back to something else and to something else and to something else, which one could interpret as, okay, go ahead and avoid the WWE shit. He's about to go ahead and tell us about the bankruptcy, the foreclosure and the bankruptcy. What else is Phil hiding? And here's another thing, too, that I've been really thinking about. But I, I mean, I might as well let it go now because I was going to talk about it now anyway. With WWE champions, ladies and gentlemen, that's only one game that we know he's sunk in a shitload of money into. That doesn't, excuse me, that doesn't mean it's the only game. Who knows how many other mobile games out there, WWE related, because there are others, that he ain't sunk a shitload of money into. And because we know he has a Discord, because that's how he was an officer of his guild, or at least he was anyway. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and he was a, a former officer in that guild. <laughs> that's the only way he's going to be an officer in anything, really. And, uh, and that's how he was communicating with all of them. Who knows how many other Discords he's part of, too? Just something to think about. 
this insane speculation. Like I said, the, the the most ridiculous example of this was years ago. That fucking whole, uh, the whole. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna jump back on the escort saga. Go ahead and play that shit all you want, ladies and gentlemen. I told you guys from the hop. I didn't know if it was real or not. It was exciting. I had a fucking blast reporting on it. I had a blast talking to people about it. I had a blast being fed information on it. Period. You know what I'm saying? You want to go ahead and throw me as the martyr for that, or throw me under the bus for it? Like, oh, well, GTG said that shit was real? Go ahead, man. At the end of the day, I had a great time with that shit. You go back and listen to my early, my early broadcast on that shit, it basically proves positive that I told you guys I wasn't sure if it was real or not. But either which way, I was going to report on it. If you want to label me an asshole for doing it, so be it. What he fails to mention, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the validity behind the escort saga, is what came out of the escort saga. That's the real interesting shit. The fact that Kimberly, that Kimberly Brinks didn't exist and whatnot, and Phil wasn't flying a high-end escort in to pleasure him and give him the real girlfriend experience, fair enough. But what did we find out? Well, he was flying a girlfriend in, or a woman in, I should say. He was courting her, despite the fact that he was broke and he had no money and there was no way of doing it. He did go ahead and lay out how one would go to go about procuring a prostitute, which is, or an escort, which is interesting that Phil Brunel would know all about that. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And then more importantly, we found, we found that we found out, sorry. <laughs> we found out that there was a catfishing fucking empire that was going on for the better part of a decade. And it got toppled because they picked the wrong low cow to go after. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, what came out of the, the escort saga overshadows every and any little thing that was said about Phil within that's, uh, within it, period. Now, that's just my own opinion. You take it for what you will. But that's what was well, the, the aftermath was way more entertaining than anything that I reported in the month previous to it, period. End of story. <laughs> At least that's my take on it. Like I said, I'll take the L for it all day that, yeah, I reported on it. I made my videos on it. I had a great time doing it. But Jesus Christ, what came out of that shit was fucking amazing. Amazing. And then look at what Phil got. <coughs> Says Phil want to be a dick about it. I'll be a dick about it too. A bigger dick, by the way, because, you know, I, I am. Ask milk and cookies, she'll tell you. Anyway, <laughs> when you think about it, think about what Phil lost. He lost one mod who definitely didn't like that whole situation. He lost that mod during Brownie's Gate. And then he lost the most important person to him out of all those mods, out of all of those people, out of all those pay piggies. He lo well, yeah, out of all those pay piggies and shit. He lost Brightside Viking in that shit. He lost him in Blood for the Blood Gods <coughs> when Brightside Viking tried to go to war with Kiwi Farms. And then Phil threw him under the bus to save himself on Twitch. Because he thought that was going to end up rolling over on him. And if you had to choose between your friendship with Brightside Viking and Twitch, Twitch apparently won. So Phil lost way more than that. So the next time Phil, for some of you pay piggies that are over here, go over there next time you're on his stream and you ask him, Hey Phil, you said that the escort saga was bullshit and everything like that, but then why did you have to do what you did to Brightside Viking? Why did that have to happen? You know what I'm saying? If it was, you know, all bullshit. How is it that you can say this is a win and the detractors are idiots, but you ended up losing a friend, a confidant, and a sergeant in arms? Ask him that question. See what he gives you. DSP News. Oh, God. The escort thing. I had no way to disprove what people were saying because it was just blatantly false. How do I disprove something that's blatantly false when there's no evidence of it existing? They just made it up. You know? It's the same thing with ever, all these things that happened to me. There's nothing I can do. I wish that I could, you know, disprove all the shit they say. I can't. If they just make shit up, there's no way that I can have evidence to show you that it's not true. You know what I mean? Um. So that's what I mean. When they say this really disgusting, defamatory stuff, in reality, what should happen is I could sue them, I would. And that would shut them all the fuck up. Because once they get hit with a defamation lawsuit and they have to pay me thousands of dollars, they're fucked. But I'm not rich, as you guys know. I have no money. I'm in financial troubles. I can't be doing that kind of stuff. So, 
I'm at the mercy of these fucked up people saying fucked up things about me all the time, and there's nothing I can do about it at all. I just have to put up with it. Um, it's fucked. Is it fucked up? Absolutely it is. But there's nothing I can do about it, so let them... What's the new thing today? You know, it was Drunken Peasants last week, some bullshit this week. What'll be next? Something new next week is going to... You just know it. Next week there will be something different and new. You know what I mean? There will always be something like that. So... There's no point in me bringing it up, there's no point in me defending it, there's no point in any of it, because it's just a waste of everyone's time. Ultimately, just like every other thing that's said about me, it blows over, because it's all fucking horseshit anyway, and they move on to something new that's more drama, because all it is ever is more drama that they fabricated. There's never any truth to any of this fucking shit, so don't worry about it. And you know what? Some people actually, at this point, don't believe me anymore. It's on you guys to believe me or not, and I know there's many people who won't, and there's many people who will, and that's okay. A dark side filled the lol cow. Big Daddy Dubs, I'm going to say this once. All right? I don't play mobile games anymore. There was a time in my life when I absolutely did. Um, But every mobile game I've ever played in the history of playing mobile games has been a time and money sink. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a single one of the games that I ever played was a game where you could actually legitimately earn anything good without spending money and or... Spending an insane amount of time grinding. Being very honest with you, I think the, the, the better thing or the more reasonable thing to do would be like, tip me some money. More fucking money, that's right. More endlessly spend money. It's addictive. It's always just pay to win. It's really just pay to win. And sometimes it's 100% it's straight up gambling. So I gave all those games up years ago. Like I said, definitively I gave Whoa. up. You gave up all those games years ago. But didn't he pay for, uh... Oh my gosh. Let, don't let my DSP lore let me down now. Um... When him and Catherine took that trip from Washington to Connecticut, um, didn't he pay for, like... Didn't he basically pay for bandwidth so they could play on... So they could... Uh, him and Catherine could basically be on their phones during the trip and for one reason for one reason or another one of the lines worked and the other one didn't so basically they would just take turns and he was basically playing mobile games on the whole flight there and the whole flight back i remember him saying something about that i don't know if i'm i don't know if anybody else will remember it either but i'm pretty confident that's what he said so he still does play mobile games though let's let's continue me when Kat would do with me. When she moved in with me, I said, I am not going to waste time, money, and resources on any of these games. We're soulmates. I feel like the cat is my soulmate. Bill tells me, I, I don't go to his stream, so I don't know, like, you know, what people say. I would never do that again. That was like the last straw for me. I, there's no point. You know, these, it's just, it's a complete. Time sink, money sink, waste of everyone's fucking time. When I have a woman now moving in with me who loves me, we're going to have a life together. We got to focus on that. I can't be focused on this other stupid shit. Especially because, as you guys know, I've been in financial trouble really badly the past couple of years. To the point where I've needed your help repeatedly just to keep stuff afloat. To stop my bank account from bouncing. To pay taxes and the like. I don't have money to fucking spend on that shit. And I don't. So, sure, what the nonsense that idiots perpetrate on this... I'm pretty confident that he said something about mobile games on a flight. I'm pretty confident. I, if I'm going to look for that clip. Actually, I'm going to ask one of y'all to look for that clip. I'm going to ask for somebody to look for that clip. <laughs> and if I find it, it's going to be inserted somewhere around here. If not, you will see it before. Hopefully, you'll see it before this. But we're going to find that clip. Because I'm pretty confident he said that. I'm, I'm pretty confident. If I don't find it, forgive me. But I'm pretty confident that he said that they... that he, Something about him playing mobile games on the flight from uh, from Washington to Connecticut. I'm pretty confident. Like I said, I'll look. Um, Delta. Delta Airline. And one of the things that we did, we wanted internet on the flight. Because we are like, we're not going to sit here for five and a half hours doing nothing. So... We looked into it, and for Delta, you can get internet on the flight, but you have to pay for it. They have free internet that's slow as dirt and doesn't really work very well, or you could pay for the high-speed internet, and then you could get it on the flight. 
So we went ahead of time the night before. This is one of the things we did Saturday night. We looked up on Delta Flights. How do you get in-flight internet? $16 a person, okay? And there's a website you do it. I forgot the website already. I completely forgot it. It might be like FlyFi or something like that, .com. And you have to purchase it ahead of time. So I did. Some of the funds my mom gave me went towards it to get us internet for the flight. Um, And it w I bought two passes and gave them my email address. All right, here's the email address to send the passes to or whatever for this, this in-flight internet. Um, great, sounds good, right? So I, it was like 32 bucks, I think, for both of us. We'll both have internet for the whole flight, six plus hours, you know, it's worth it so we're not bored. Um, so we go through security, no issues in security, everything's good. You know, we're like, okay, we're at the height we wanna do, uh, or wanna mess with our phones, get on the internet, maybe play some mobile games or whatever. So they did have charging, but the charging was USB only. It didn't have power sockets on this plane. It was USB charging. So I brought my charging cable. I plugged it in. We started plugging it into our phones. We're like, it says it's charging, but it's not going up. It was the slowest charging I've ever seen in my life. Like maybe every 15 minutes, it would go up 1%. So even if you were charging your phone, if you were using it, the battery would go boo way fast because the charger basically didn't really charge it at all. It was like the slowest trickle of energy we'd ever seen. Um, so I had bought those internet passes I had told you guys about because they're called Fly Fi Internet or whatever. So we go to do it, and I'm trying to figure it out. It's a little, I'll be honest, it was a little complicated to try to figure this thing out. Um, you could connect to the internet for free, but you wouldn't do, do data. It was only like messaging or checking emails. It wouldn't allow you to like play a game or anything. It wasn't enough data to do that. So it was a good thing that we had paid for this internet ahead of time. Cause we went and looked, if you didn't buy it before the flight, it was $40 a person to get internet on this flight. $40 a person for five hours of internet. That's $8 an hour. That's more expensive than checking our luggage. $40 a person. So thank God we had bought it ahead of time. All right. So I go to set it up. I'm trying to figure it out. A little, like I said, it's a little complicated. You had to go through a certain website, do a login here and there. And I'm dicking around with it. The other thing was it needed a, a Delta account. And I didn't know this, but I already had a previous Delta account, probably from a flight like 10 years ago. Remember when I was flying everywhere for conventions and E3 and all of that? Well, apparently I had a Delta account already, but I didn't know. So I had to go to like, like try to figure out what my old email password was and everything. And it took me a while. I figured it out. So I log in finally and I get, I get one of the passes working. Okay. Oh, it's working. So I, I sync my phone to it. I go to play my games and some my mobile games. They work. Oh wow. The internet actually works. So this was working well. This is exciting. Now we can, you know, Kat plays a couple games on her phone. Um, and I, I only play one, but you know, this will be fun and exciting. We'll get to do some fun stuff on the flight with our phones. Maybe check the internet or whatever. And no, I didn't play the 40 bucks. No, 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 no. I didn't play the 40 bucks. We had paid the $16 the night before. Remember, I just said we had bought it the night before. Thank God. There's no way we're paying $40 a pop for internet. So I logged mine in. So then I tried to get Kat's phone working. Well, guess what? We got screwed. Here's how we got screwed. When I bought the two internet passes... I used the same email address, okay, for both passes. Well, guess what? The way that this system works, it's one pass per email, okay? If you try to get a second phone, it doesn't work. It only works one at a time per email. So even though I had bought two passes, since I had associated them with one email address, we could only get one phone to work at a time. Because I tried logging both in, and it wouldn't work. It would kick the other phone off the internet. So basically, only one of us had internet at a time. So I played my game for an hour. Oh, okay, I'm going to charge. Then she would play her game for an hour. Oh, okay. So we went back and forth. But it was fine. We had stuff to do. We, were, I, I, we watched a little bit of the TV. Uh, you know, played our games for a little bit. Had some snacks. I would say on the Delta flight, the snacks were okay. That you would. Th By the way, they were complimentary. And I should commend Delta on this. Complimentary, decent-sized snacks. You had a choice between, I think it was like a, 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 a corned beef sandwich... Um, a, a veggie wrap or a box of cheese and like, like nuts and cracker snacks. And I, was there fruit? There was fruit. What kind of fruit was it? Apples. Apples and grapes. That's right. So it was like some apple slices, grapes, uh, cr sea salt crackers, and three kinds of cheese. It was like uh, white cheddar, regular cheddar, and like pepper jack. 
Um, it was pretty good. I, I will admit it. It was actually pretty good, uh, and it was free. So I was like, "This, I'm not gonna complain about that at all." I was pleased because I was a little, little hungry. On we had already eaten the shitty flavor of the sandwiches before we got on the flight, but it was actually not that bad. Okay, so we ate this, and you know, we had fun. We played our games, whatever. We were good. And then when the flight got off, uh, the flight surprisingly enough, surprisingly enough, the flight arrived early. Internet about me spending money on mobile games and other stupid shit. It's all bullshit. I don't, I don't even care about the details that they talk about because it's all such fucking nonsense. I just don't care. I seriously don't. I'm not going to pay any attention to it. And that's all I'm saying on the subject. A couple of minutes, but a few minutes ago, we didn't have our details straight. You know, motherfuckers are always lying about shit. They're just coming up with new lies, this, that, and a third. Now, well, now they're talking about mobile games. And I don't know about nothing. And you got to pick, you got to pick and choose, Phil. <laughs> you got to stick to a lie. You got to stick to it. And you got to write it out all the way. Mobile games, because that's the truth. That's what I told you guys a million times on stream. You guys ask me about mobile games and stuff. I always answer exactly the same way. My story has never changed. It's, that's always been my story. So I don't understand why all of a sudden, you know, oh, now they, they, they f completely make fucking something up here. And now it's time that we're, you know, let's start a new detractor me. But Phil's story's always been the same because it's the truth. So why would you believe something to the contrary? Oh, because it's the new flavor. You guys hear the hesitation in those chuckles? Me too. The day, you know, last week, it was the stupid, dumbass, drunken peasants drama where they wanted to start shit up. I completely shut them the fuck down and ended that within a day. So now we need the new thing. We need the new drama. Let's make something else up completely. Fuck this. I've had enough of their bullshit. Seriously. I had to lie about things because I had to protect my family. Right? PW does not tip the dollar and said this cat was sleeping in another room because of my snoring. Um, well, what'll happen sometimes is I'll wake up. And she'll be, like, gone, and then I'll ask her the next morning what happened, and she'll be like, yeah, you were snoring really bad, so I, you know, I went to another room or whatever. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! Why would you admit to that? <laughs> I woke up in the morning and she was gone. <laughs> oh, shit. Why would you admit to that, dude? <laughs> oh. oh wow yo that's some wild shit okay that's some wild shit on a couple of fronts right one <coughs> excuse me oh shit oh it's, it hurts so much to laugh but I had to I had to do it it's in my nature okay so <laughs> Okay, so you snore so bad that she has to leave the room and go to another room. One, doesn't he have like a, stro a snore strap or something? Two, your snoring was so bad that she had to pick up and leave to another room, my dude? Damn. Three, I, she said the snoring was so bad she had to pick up and leave to another room. And when I woke up the next morning, I asked her what happened. She said the snoring was so bad that she had to pick up and leave. So he doesn't even know if she picked up and bounced in the middle of the night. So, and, and um, I'm only putting it, I'm, I'm throwing out a scenario. Okay? I'm throwing out a scenario. I'm not saying that she actually did it or didn't. I'm not privy to any information. But she could... The opportunity is there, especially since Phil goes to bed late and wakes up even later. She could pick up and leave in the middle of the night, go wherever, Jim, Tyrone, whoever, Tevin, whoever, and then come right back and slide into her office. Phil wake up the next morning. He don't know shit about shit. Oh, she must have went into her room into her office and, and fell asleep there because, you know, because I was snoring too loud last night. And the day goes on with nobody having to, uh, no one having to answer for anything. Yikes. She can literally move around at night with full immunity if she wanted to. Oh, boy. I, and now that's all alleged, though. That's all. That's just, that's just brain dead detractor talking there, by the way. 
There's, I, I don't know shit about shit. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You idiot. Why would you admit that? Now I got to turn it into a meme. Or somebody will. I don't, I don't fart. What happens is these frogs keep sleeping, sleeping into the, the house. Toxic gas. It's not it. Up your nose now. Going this on? guy's a bitch. Um, but, you know, it's not all the time. That's just, you know, every once in a while it's like really, really bad. Or she can't sleep for some reason and my stomach's keeping her up. King of hypocrisy, King, King of hypocrisy says, next thing you know, they'll say that I'll have a hair transplant. Well, again, one of their memes is that apparently I'm experiencing massive hair loss. And so, since I'm experiencing massive hair loss, I need some kind of hair plugs. Or maybe I'm already looking into hair plugs. Maybe I'm scamming the viewers to pay for hair. I mean... I am of the of the thought process that you're coloring your hair. To be honest, I don't th I don't, and I think the reason why you won't do your beard and your chin is because either a you're afraid you're gonna mess it up, or b it's too far gone and you know it's gonna be noticeable. He would much rather have a full, luscious, greasy, you know, what I'm saying head of dark hair than and let everything else go gray, because then he could just cut it all off. So he kind of wins either which way. That's, I'm just throwing that out there. I think he's personally coloring his hair, but you know, that's just me. Hair plugs, right? Uh. Phil has indoctrinated children who send him money, blatantly milking for money. It's a money pit. It's gone, just gone like that, in an instant, fucking gone. I just care about money. That I just can't help it. I eBay. Contributions are mandatory, but I need your help. I am appealing directly to you. No decency, no respect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Snorper Now. I very much appreciate it. And we're going to go on to the fourth video that's going to make up our broadcast. This video is brought to us by uh, Argent. Okay, you guys, uh, the, the link to his video will be in the description. So you guys can go ahead and, and catch his hot takes without my annoying voice on it. But it's, uh, let's see, the video is DSP tries it, spending 40k plus on WWE mobile games, on a WWE mobile game. It's from January 14th of 2020. So, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> no common That's the thing with Phil. Every time you think you've seen everything, every time you think this possibly can't get any worse, or this possibly can't get any weirder, it somehow does. So our good friends over at Kiwi Farms have dug up that DSP is apparently addicted to mobile gaming. Now, if you've never played a mobile game before, most mobile games are freemium. So they'll they'll be a certain amount of the game will be um, will be playable for free. And then if you want to get further or you want to get faster or something, there'll often be time limits. Like in Clash of Clans or whatever, resource gathering takes forever, but you can unlock it faster if you pay money. And then in a lot of games... Actually, um, Asian GTG just said something that actually kind of made me think. Uh, what's the name of that one game that everybody likes to play? That is sponsoring everybody right now. It's like, is it like Rafe Shadow Legends or something like that? Um, let me see here, right? That's what it's called, isn't it? Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's called Raid Shadow Legends. Um, okay, yeah, it's called Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, uh, Asian GTG says it's like that too. Like, it, like it's very, very like you can grind to get pulls on like really on like you know rare heroes or rare champions or whatever the case may be. But a lot of it you're gonna have to buy, and even then you might not even get what you want. And with that being said, he said that uh, that a that at least that he knows of. That there has been a person who spent a hundred thousand dollars in real real U.S. dollars cash to pull for a hero and didn't get it. So just something to think about. This is how ridiculous it can get. You know what I mean? A hundred thousand dollars, and that's it makes sense because when you think about the sponsorships for Raid Shadow Legends and some of the people who've spoken about it. Uh, have spoken about like what their contracts are with promoting the game. They're making good money. They're making what, what's it? Alinity likes to say, good money. They're, they're like that. That they're they're paying out really good money because 
there's some enormous whales in there dropping money on that game. So just to give you guys an example. So I think they're called gotcha games where they take a bunch of people from a franchise, be it like Pokemon or Fire Emblem or Dragon Ball or something, and you have to spend in-game currency to do polls where you randomly get a character. And like the rare characters have a very low percent chance of, of pulling them. Like I remember in early Fire Emblem Heroes, everyone wanted to get Hector or Lin or some of the uh, ones like Halloween Fae. And obviously the best ones have a very low chance of being pulled. So you have to spend a lot of in-game currency. So you can either get that, like they'll give you a certain amount, and then you can do some more by doing kind of some basic stuff. And then you really have to kind of dig deep and spend a lot of time to get more than that. Or you can just go and buy some. And, and that's often the fastest way to do it. Now the economy really depends upon the game you're in. Fire Emblem Heroes, I think, is one of the better ones. They, you can very easily play it as a freemium game and never spend any money. Obviously, if there's like a rare event, if, if you want a decent chance of getting some of the limited time heroes, you might want to spend some money on that. But generally speaking, the game's pretty generous with the in-game currency. Um, there's ways around needing top tier heroes. You can take pretty much a freemium team and do a really good job with it. You can even go and like, there's guides online on how to do it. And there are games like Pokemon Go, once again, where if you want to spend money, you can spend money. And it might help you, but you can still play it for free. And then there's games like this, apparently, where advancement in the game is 100% based on money. Where to get anywhere in it, it's based on money. So apparently, Phil is number four in this guild called Uselessness. It's funny that his capitalization is exactly the same as it is on Twitter, but we'll get to that in a minute. So DSP is, I think that's in the world that he's ranked like number 41st in. So this game is like apparently like the biggest pay pig game of all time. Like, let's just cut to the chase. How much money do we think Phil, or how much money do the Kiwis think Phil has spent on this game? Estimates range from ten. Now, Arjun isn't wrong. It's this, 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 this money. I mean, this game brings money in. Like it, 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 it banks. And if if Phil is number forty one, some people think he's he's actually a little bit higher up in his ranking. Like he he's probably closer to number four um, in the world. Not sure. Maybe just the United States or whatever the region is. Whatever the case may be. If he's number four, right? Or and he spent what we assume he has spent forty thousand dollars plus, then you got to assume whoever it is that's number one, hell, whoever number one and number two is, threw some real cash down to get to where they're at. And if you start looking through, um, through the discords a little bit, and you look at some of the conversations or whatnot, it it's it's one of those games where you you're paying for clout. You're basically paying for clout. You got a bunch of guys in there or a bunch of people in there who are wrestling heads and you're getting clout for the money you're spending and what you're pulling. And it's uh and it keeps people coming back. So but let's continue. K to forty five thousand dollars. Yes, forty five thousand dollars. I couldn't even imagine spending that much money on Fire Emblem Heroes. That would be enough to get like every hero in the game multiple times over and i'm canadian that's american money so that's that's like that's like what i make in a year no that's more than what i make in a year it's more than what i make in a year that this dude apparently spent on this one mobile game and this isn't the only mobile game he's played uh we're pretty sure he bought a bunch of stuff in pokemon go he bought a bunch of stuff in some final fantasy game he used to be addicted to wwe Supercard. He spent so much money on that, he made up this bullshit story about him using iTunes gift cards for um, for Supercard. I think there's like a Cartoon Network one. There, there's like a bunch of mobile games that we're pretty sure he's put a bunch of money in. So not only has he probably put like 10 to 40k into this one game, but God knows how much this all adds up to. This could be, I don't know, 50, 60, 70,000 dollars he's spent on mobile games. 
it's 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 insanity. And when I mean, you spend that much money on a mobile game, you just don't give it up. You just don't give it up. Not at all. You also have to keep in mind, Phil buys at least one lottery ticket a week. I don't know how much lottery tickets are in the United States, but even if that's like three or four dollars, that's still like, what, uh, like 150 to 200 dollars a year or something he's spending in lottery tickets. And I'm sure he buys more than that because Phil is a gambling problem. So, like, this, this raises all sorts of other questions. Because, like, what was it that he owed on the condo in Connecticut? Like, 60 grand or something? This could have paid off the majority of his condo. I'm sure he could have paid off, like, most of his credit cards. And keep in mind, he spent this money over time. So if he had been putting this money towards his credit cards... He wouldn't have to pay the interest on those on, on the money he didn't pay back. You get That's what actually I... an excellent point because remember when Phil was crying last year about oh the government came in and raised all the interest rates so I went from paying you know zero interest to now I'm paying double. No idiot, that had nothing to do with the government. You had an introductory rate, an introductory rate, and once your the period was over, whether it was twelve months. Uh, 16 months, 24 months if his credit was good enough, which it probably wasn't, then bam, you got hit with interest, bitch. But what Arjun is saying is that, oh, well, if he had taken that 40000 over the last couple years and put it towards those credit cards, he'd have been, he could have had them all paid off. The problem, though, is that Phil was using those credit cards to probably fund this game or these games. So it's an endless cycle, a vicious endless cycle. I mean, so let's say his credit card debt is, I don't know, like 60K now. It might have initially only been about 40K, but because he keeps occurring interest on it, it gets worse. So if he had been putting this money towards it the whole time, his situation may not be anywhere near as bad. So it gets weirder and weirder. Now, the Kiwis were doing some digging and they found whenever there was, I guess in other games they call them a banner, but whenever there's a big event that you need a lot of money for, it happens to coincide pretty well with whenever Phil does a bagathon. It seems like immediately before or after they have one of these, Phil is in a desperate need of money. He needs a thousand dollars to get his Golden Hulk Hogan or whatever it is. So it's quite possible that that a couple of these tax emergencies are actually him begging for money. So he can buy stuff in a WWE gotcha game. Like, it's it's really fucking weird. The weirdest part is, like, so apparently he has, he's on this, he's an officer in, like, a mod on this, this guild's Discord server. And well, he used to be an officer. Uh, as uh, I think the last time I heard, he, got de he basically got demoted, or he got deranked, if you will. You can't come up with the cash, man. And you know, I just want your cash, man. If you, if he, if, I guess if he couldn't spend, then you know, they, they they dropped him, or they didn't drop him, but he got deranked. Yikes! And he claims that, and that he doesn't. That kind of makes sense too, and you'll hear this later on because um, in his gill, he's I don't know if he's the biggest whale, but he might be one of the biggest whales, and that looks good on their guild. And I guess they get like certain perks because they got a they got a high spender, they got a high roller, if you will, in their gill. So there was a lot more dependent on Phil spending all this money. More there was more going on than just for him. There was other people who were benefiting benefiting from it too. On top of that, that that adds to his clout, and that clout is what Phil likes. And even if Phil has to pay for it, he it's still clout, and he still wants it. So it kind of opens up some of the psychology in in this type of situation. But you, you, we'll talk about that more as this goes on. What Discord is, but in, in one of his um, live streams, uh, you can see his desktop, and he has Discord on his desktop. So obviously, no, he knows what it is. And the username is they call me DSP. And when people were talking to him, he was, of course, denying it. He said, I've never played a mobile game, etc. So there's apparently like a text comparison program. I don't know like how accurate these things are. But they took his text from Twitter and compared it to the, the, the posts he's made on Discord. 
it said it was like 96 to 97 percent sure it was the same person yeah that was kind of crazy uh james lesser talked about that uh in his videos going over this uh, i i think it was actually like it was 97 or 98 percent chance it was phil with like a like a 13 or 14 percent chance you know what i'm saying that it <laughs> that it couldn't be anybody but phil something like that um don't don't hold me on the percentages. It was a pretty high percentage that it was Phil. It was it was a pretty high percentage. So, you know, yet again, it's it's entertainment. Take it for what you will, but it's it's pretty compelling. <laughs> Just like it's it's pretty crazy. <laughs> I'm gonna report on it regardless. It's pretty entertaining. I gotta tell you, it's pretty entertaining. And I think Phil's gonna have no choice but to fess up to this. So, eventually. Apparently it's never failed it's never been wrong if it's above 85 percent certainty so who knows that that's true but phil does have a very unique way of uh writing and talking and immediately when people started mentioning the name of the guild on his streams they got banned and the server went into like emergency on sector seven they banned everyone who joined i think he deleted his account there like things just went completely. They uh, his his guild started to close ranks, and uh, they were they were trying to protect Phil basically because they didn't want to lose him, um, and whatnot. Now, don't worry, the 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 hot take I have at the end of this kind of goes into that a little bit. But they they didn't want to lose him, and that goes back to what I was telling you about how these people valued what he was bringing to the table, and uh, and the the kind of in the residuals that they were getting. So there was more gambling on this than just Phil crazy so it definitely looks like they're, he's hiding something because i mean if if you just randomly got accused of being some random dude like dsp you think you would just like say look it's not me i don't know what your guy's issue is or maybe explain where you got the username from or you could even just go into discord like voice chat and let people hear you and know that you aren't phil but Instead of that, they just had like a complete and total freak out and they spazzed out. So, yeah, it looks like it's Phil. It looks like he's. Yeah, which gives more validity to the fact that it was more than likely Phil. <laughs> because the, taking the, the straightforward method to, to anything is not Phil's way. It has to be complicated. It has to be messy. It has to basically be ignorant. So, yeah, of course it was Phil. A officer in one of the top whale guilds in some shitty wwe game um and he spent 10 to forty thousand dollars. so god knows how much money he spent on this in total um the saga is fascinating and it keeps getting more and more so so i guess this kind of maybe puts out to pasture once and for all the theory that phil's some sort of evil genius and he has like some stash somewhere offshore with all the cash he scammed his fans out of. No, he blew it all in a shitty mobile game. I don't know. It kind of reminds me once again of something um, J.R.R. Tolkien really tried to put forward in the Lord of the Rings games. Uh, sorry, movie. Books, not games. That ultimately evil is very pathetic. Um, ultimately evil is very petty. It's very pathetic. It's very sad. It doesn't have these grandiose schemes. It's literally just kind of a child throwing a tantrum because they didn't get its own way. So there we go. There's Phil's latest shenanigans. And and I'm glad Arjun brought that up because it's so fucking true. <laughs> At least in Phil's case. You know what I'm saying? I never thought as Phil's evil because I feel like Phil's too stupid to be evil. Um, But then, if you think about it, you know, uh, you know, evil is just live spelled backwards. And Phil wants to live his life the way he wants to live it. And he doesn't care who it hurts. He doesn't care who he has to trample on to make that happen. As long as he gets what he wants. One could interpret that as being evil to some degree. So just something to think about. But I'm glad that Arjun brought that up. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hat tip to Kiwi Farms. And I'll talk to you guys later. And All right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you yet again to Arjun. I think this was the first time him being on the channel. But uh, like I said, I'll leave the link to this video in the description. Um, uh, he should have a bunch of DSP content on his channel that he used to do back in the day. It's, it's some great stuff. 
uh, I'd like to actually start to go over some of that this year if I can. It's it's some eye-opening stuff, and uh, I, his opinion has value, and I think a lot of you guys would uh, would appreciate that. I think so. Uh, definitely go ahead. Like so, I'll leave the link of it down in the description. You can check that out, along with everything we have from Snorper now. Now this is the last one. This is the coup de gras, if you will. This is Josh from Kiwi Farms. Uh, this video is uh, where'd you guys get this video? From? This is from the Kiwi Farms archives, but you can also find it on the Mad at the Internet uh, YouTube channel as well. I'll leave someone's going to leave the link to one or if not both of those channels down in the description. But this is Josh going over. Um, yikes, my bad. <laughs> this is Josh going over uh, some of the situation too. Initial, the first part of it was for the bankruptcy. I'm saving that for something else. But uh, he's going to go over the the WWE card game thing too and his hot take. And uh, I think I thought it was a good listen. I thought it was something that you guys would want to hear. And then uh, we'll wrap all this up in a nice clean bow. All right. So big ups to Josh from the Kiwi Farms. Here we go. The big thing that he's upset about is this. This this thread came out um, on Saturday, so right after the last stream, and it's a very long thread, and it was one of the threads that I did a lot of testing on regarding the new highlight feature that I was developing uh, to make sure that it was highlighting the, the right information and making long threads legible. Uh, someone did some digging and found out that Dark Side Phil is a whale for a mobile game. Uh, they believe that he has spent tens of thousands of dollars between like ten thousand dollars is the conservative estimate and 30 in excess of thirty thousand dollars is the generous estimate in regards to exactly how much real money he has poured into this wwe mobile game uh called wwe champions uh he is it was sort of unbelievable at first because the, he used they call me dsp as his tag in wwe champion and the first thought is you know someone changed their name or or something but based on his spending habits based on the fact that he was number four in the entire world for this particular game and uh there's no way that it's a joke like it's like a reverse Saudi Arabian prince, uh, if if it is a joke. There's um a specific post somewhere down the line where they match up his oh they tr they track his login dates because the login information is public, and it, it very closely matches. Like he's logging into this game right after his streams, and then right before his streams, and then not during the streams. So either this person is someone uh, who's extremely dedicated to putting on this facade to the point where they're spending tens of thousands of dollars, or their DSP, which is the more likely explanation. They went into the Discord group, and this kind of explains a mystery that the DSP people have been having for some time, where he refuses, he refuses to make an official Discord and he refuses to participate in third-party discords ran by actual fans of his. But, on some of his streams, people had noticed that the Discord icon was on his desktop. And people were asking, why do you have Discord if you refuse to use Discord? And the answer is that his clan, Uselessness, on the WWE Champions mobile game, has a Discord server. And he is considered, like the biggest spender in the game and because he is such a heavy spender and because he makes uh you know high places on the the high score tables all the people in his clan benefit as a result and they were very eager to ban anyone asking about dsp they were quick to deny that that's uh, dsp they were quick to deny that uh he was a member of their group because they really really did not want to chase this guy off who they were all kind of benefiting from the presence of so, <laughs> don't worry, we're not over yet. It's not over yet. It, it, ain't, it ain't over. It, ain't, it is not over, ladies and gentlemen. But it's funny how Phil, who uses other people, right? It's, it's what he is. He's a natural user. It's one of the worst qualities of him is that he uses people to his own ends. Is being used by others, too, for their ends. And he's okay with it. 
Phil tells you how he doesn't like people being dishonest. He doesn't like being taken advantage of. He doesn't like having his time wasted, yada, yada, yada. But he's playing a game that is literally just siphoning large amounts of money allegedly out of him. He's part of this guild that is using his status and his poor spending habits as clout. And the more clout that they give that that they give him, the more money he spends. And in turn, the more clout that they continue to get. So they want to use him for as long as they can. And if he cuts and runs, no big deal. Though their status will be so big that they can just draw, they can attract, I should say, other whales to them. And the process starts all over. It's amazing how he gets used by all these people, the quarter pounder, potentially drunken peasants, all these people who are around him to use him. And yet he wants to go ahead and cry about Tevin and the detractors and all this, that, and the third. He, he, you see how he doesn't know how to prioritize. He's worrying about frivolous shit that don't mean nothing when there are people out there in the real world, you know what I'm saying, preying upon him, and he can't even tell the difference. And I can see why uh, some people pity him for that, because his lack of real world experience, he don't know better. And that's shameful. Or no, let's let me reward that. It's a shame. It's a shame that he gets taken advantage of that's going to eventually hurt him. More than Tevin ever hurt him, uh, more than LSB ever hurt him, more than anybody's ever hurt him, to be honest, any detractor, more than Fred, sons of Kojima. He's, he, there were other people out there that have really worked him into a position and are going to benefit the most. And Phil's going to be bankrupt, living back at home with mommy or living out of some shitty apartment, and he's going to be alone. More than likely. If Catherine is smart, she'll she'll pack up what she has, she'll pack up her gamer stuff, she'll pack up Jasper, and she'll be out that bitch. And Phil's gonna be alone. And that's the reality. And he can sit there and cry about Tevin, he can sit there and cry about whoever he wants, please be. But it's not gonna really mean a damn. It's what it coulda, shoulda. Because the real adversaries the real threats were right in front of him. He didn't want to see it because he was he thought he was benefiting from it. Just throwing it out there. Let's continue. And, and uh, this is, I think this is his uh, gamer tag or whatever. He has all these different things. So either, again, either DSP coincidentally had Discord after denying using Discord. After saying that he couldn't figure out the app and he didn't want to use it. Uh... While at the same time someone was impersonating him on multiple platforms and spending tons and tons of money while doing while doing it, or the person who is now going bankrupt is like a mentally ill addict of mobile games and spent tens of thousands of dollars that were allegedly going towards taxes and bills uh, on a cheap, shitty gotcha game ran by WWE. And uh, in case you're curious, DSP is a huge fan of WWE. He wanted to do a um stylized project to the theme of like a wrestling type thing uh he's streamed in excess a lot of uh, wwe franchise video games he's he is a fan of of the wrestling entertainment industry so totally 100 percent him uh it's just crazy that that he would do this and the really sad thing is the really um I don't know how you'd want to describe it. I would use sad, but he just got married. I think, I think he just married that woman cat and immediately after they get married, he files for bankruptcy or plans to file for bankruptcy. And hopefully he's going to be able to file as an individual and take the hit without her being affected. But if they were, um, if she was not cautious and they bound their finances together, she is going to take a huge hit in her own credit for up to 10 years because she will be a part of the bankruptcy. That would be even though she has no parts in it. So like I said, I'm hoping that and and Phil can take the hit on his own and, and he's going to have to, he's going to have to pay his dues. And then in 10 years or whatever, how long it's going to take his, his credit eventually bounces back. But if he thinks that, Oh, well you should file with me, cat. You know, you should file with me, honey, because if not, you know, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen to you. You might have other stuff, too, 
or she said he remember how Phil used to say that she had existing debts and other stuff that she was paying down if he tries to convince her to wrap all that in with his shit oh just go ahead and throw all that in with mine and then in a couple years you'll be okay no it's not gonna be a couple years so whatever outstanding debts that she might have or whatever I hope she just decides to just try to pay it down on her own don't make him don't let him think that this is a quick fix because you're going to be out for a decade in the in the cold with him too there's no need for that at least i hope she don't do it but who knows he unbelievably unfortunate because they they literally just got married and then he thinks oh i have to file for bankruptcy so if she does take a hit he is just like the most inconsiderate asshole who has ever lived uh just preposterously inconsiderate so hopefully i'm hoping i'm on team cat i'm really hoping that she doesn't uh get blindsided by a bankruptcy but uh i don't know i don't know what she sees in dark side phil so maybe it's her own fault maybe we can just blame her for it <laughs> okay we're now like in the middle of the stream so i can pull this out without being uh too likely to get banned for it Play the game. All right, guys. Uh, give me just a second here. All right, give me a second to clean up, and then <laughs> we'll move forward. Thank you to Josh from Kiwi Farms for that. I very much appreciate his hot take on that one. Uh, crazy stuff. Absolutely crazy stuff. Hopefully, that wasn't a complete and total disappointment. <laughs> First off, let's go ahead and <coughs> excuse me. Thank you to Snorpernell, Argent, and Josh from Kiwi Farms for uh, for everything, to be honest with you. I very much appreciate it. Uh, let's go ahead and run down the gamut, shall we? So, first thing with uh, with the first part with uh, what I say sometimes is true. <laughs> Let's, just let, let's go ahead and skip that. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Uh, can't allow them to have 100% control of my content. They're not. They asked for one thing, and he's afraid that from that one little thing that he would be giving over a, a large amount of control, which shows him to be a control freak, uh, to be honest, and extremely narcissistic, where he can't even give the littlest thing to them. Which means that when you see a lot of these voting, uh, these polls that he holds, or a lot of these voting processes, they're rigged. They've always been rigged. The people always knew that shit, that he was skewing them behind the scenes to get what he wanted. This is no different. So, and if that don't prove it, I don't know what does. Uh, let's see here. And uh, overreactions, he's a clown. Enough said. So that doesn't need to be harped on anymore. The positive vibe meme, he knows what it was. He blatantly lied to them in their faces, which is sad because he's watched plenty of Snorpernell content. I know that. He's tried to take down Snorpernell content. We all know that. So he knows exactly what the meme is. I mean, he should have just laughed it off and moved on. Thick skin, he has no thick skin. He's as soft, as pathetic, and as weak as anybody. Or as weak as yeah, anybody or anything. You would think after all these years being on the internet, taking all this criticism, you'd have you would have been toughened up to this shit. I was told that his father was a fucking Marine and this is the best that he was able to produce. Y yikes, yikes. Apparently Simple Fly, Simple Fly doesn't run through that family very well. There's no hoorahs to be given. Um, I'm not getting divorced. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Because he's going through, you're, he's about to go through the worst possible fuckery in a little while. And Kat's going to have a very hard choice to make. And it, uh, to be honest, it isn't that hard, but <laughs> in more ways than one. I'm sure she could tell you all about that. But it's she's going to have to make a hard choice. Kat, if you're listening to this, do what you're good at. Cut and run. Save yourself. Um, so that, that's my thoughts on that one. As for uh, the last part, I can't disprove that I wasted 40000 
on a mobile game and I've already left uh, I already left mobile games. Like I said, I swear that I thought he said uh, that on when as they were going from Connecticut or from sorry from Washington to Connecticut for the marriage for that vacation that he bought a data plan or two data plans so they could basically play mobile games and shit on the flight there and back. So that would be a lie. But like I said, we're going to have to look for that and whatnot. But if I don't find it, I apologize. But I'm pretty confident he said that. I'm pretty confident he did that. So that's that's my thoughts on that. And more importantly, they they damn near have him dead the rights. The evidence is pretty compelling. Like I said, I'll leave the link to the Kiwi Farms down in the description. As well as Argent. Um, the, uh, the Argent video the Josh, uh, the Kiwi Farms video, and then obviously all the Snorp and Up videos will be down there, and you can check for yourself. Uh, yet again, uh, there's also, I can, um, if I remember, I'll have one of the guys here do it, I'll leave you guys the James the Lesser videos that goes over that too. It's compelling. So, it, it's Phil. Do, would you expect Phil to do some dumb shit like this, dude? I don't fucking underestimate Phil for shit. I don't underestimate him to do anything. I don't care how stupid it is. I don't put nothing past him. Ignorance is bliss, and if he, if you guys have been following content, if you've been following DSP this long, you should not be surprised by a goddamn thing, because any time you think you have him figured out, you, you'll find out very, 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 very quickly that you know nothing, and I think that's one of the life lessons, if nothing else, that Phil has, it can teach the detractors, because obviously his fan base has given up, that Phil is proof positive that there is nothing for sure, there is nothing guaranteed, and you should never underestimate stupidity. You should never underestimate greed. You should never underestimate selfishness. And if he is evil, you should never underestimate him. If you want to go that route. And Phil embodies all of those things to some way, shape, or form. That's my personal opinion. And, um... That's it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's, that's all you guys have for me. Uh... Uh, the next video, let me take a look real quick and see what this hot take is going to be. Uh, let's see. The next video should be the foreclosure. Next video should be foreclosure, so that might be a long one. Uh, obviously, we're going to do the snow report, so we're going to go with the snorper no version of that. And then um, uh, there was a couple other versions out there, one by... Uh, by sim uh, by semicolon from Kiwi Farms who did a, a clip on that. I know uh, uh, I know Mimology did one. I know Mighty D did one. Um, like I said, we'll go with the Snorper No one first. You know, keep it official to the broadcast, and then we can branch out and we can go ahead and go through another sp perspective with their with some of these other videos, and we'll try to get into that and dissect that a little more. You know how we we do with that. We're we're cool at being diligent. So, but expect that one to be next, after this one, uh, at least for the snow report, and then we'll we'll see where we go from there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening in. Excuse me, I very much appreciate it, and I'll see you guys for the next broadcast, whenever that may be, hopefully sooner than later. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking. Unreliable coverage that you can't count on. Oh yes, a GTG Network and Productions for the snow report. I've been your host. Well, for the snow report and for Snorbucks Coffee Company. I've been your host, slash anchor, GTG, and I'm signing off. Take care of yourselves, guys. And uh, excuse my, my, my cold. <laughs> Take care of yourselves, guys. End the broadcast.